Marble. I can control metal. Chapter 41. The silver supercar quickly disappeared in front of Leo. Leo turned around and walked to the meeting place that had been gone. He reached the balcony on the roof, where Pepper was still waiting. Although it has been nearly half an hour, she still looks forward to Tony coming back with a glass of martini with more olives. Watching Leo walk in front of him, there was a trace of disappointment in Pepper's eyes. Sister Pepper, Mr. Stark, there is an emergency. She has already left. Let me pick you up. Let's go back together. Pepper blinked vigorously, nodded and said with a smile, well, let's go, I happen to be driving. With Leo, the two also ate a meal in the city, talking and laughing along the way and drove home. Pepper still returned to the room, there should be many unfinished documents in his hand. Leo rushed to the underground studio, before opening the door, he saw a flash of fire. When a pulse cannon was fired, a large hole appeared on the ceiling of the basement, and several adjacent light tubes all fell and shattered. And Tony's right hand is wearing the finished and painted Mark III arm part. Opened the door and came in, but Tony did not respond, looking at the hole in the wall. Leo also saw what was broadcast on TV, and it was the reporter who was reporting on the current situation in the town of Gemila. The recent riots are a force of foreign warlords. The locals are called freedom fighters. As you can see, anyone who dares to stop is a dead end. By my side, this woman is asking for news about her husband, who is kidnapped by rioters and may be forced to join their army. The desperate refugees are holding pictures of their relatives in their hands, and anxiously inquiring about the news from people passing by. A kid asked me, where are my parents? These refugees have a very slim chance of survival. They can only dream of someone coming to rescue them. Tony also walked to the door, looking at his own shadow reflected on the glass door, the strange figure. I once said that I don't make murderous weapons. Now, in Gemela, Ethan's hometown, everyone is ravaged by the war, but they are using weapons that I said I'm not making. This is a joke. Single quote. Tony looked at his heart squarely and made up his mind. He raised his right hand and smashed himself on the door. Bang, 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 the three crisp beeps of the glass door, like celebrating Tony's new life. Leo, the gold titanium alloy has been delivered to your room, I'll go out, you go to bed first. Tony walked to the experiment board. Leo saw the face of the bald leader and the appearance of the bearded deputy leader on TV. At the same time, there were a lot of shots of refugees. Mr. Stark, don't you need to think about it again. Leo already knew what he wanted to do, but he had some thoughts about the two tons of gold titanium alloy in the room. Stark did not answer, took off his white vest, put on a special black tight-fitting combat suit, and stood in the center of the experiment board. In these days, Tony has transformed this place into a manipulator console to put on the Mark III for himself. The experiment board cracked, and a total of 12 manipulators presented all the parts of the Mark III. Tony's feet stepped into the foot armor, and the calves, thighs, and waist were also attached, and the robot tightened the parts. Both hands parts were also sent down from the top. Tony stretched out his hands, arms, shoulders and elbows, carapace lining, and outer shell. They also stepped forward to tighten Tony, and the equipment was completed. Finally, the parts of the head were also attached and fixed. The golden mask was directly covered, and the eyes lit up. Mark III is completely body, and has all been put on Tony's body. The most familiar red gold collocation, a prototype of combat power armor, equipped with pulse guns, missiles, jammers and mini machine guns on the hands, shoulders, and both sides of the thighs. The upgraded crystal lens on the chest can focus energy and give a powerful blow. At the same time, the titanium gold mixed aluminum alloy solves the problem of freezing at high altitude. Mr. Stark, it's thousands of miles away from Gemira. Even if you fly over, it will take several hours. Have you decided? Leo said to Tony a little serious, this time it was not an experiment, but a real battle. Tony didn't answer. The Mark III had already started, ejected flames, flew outwards, showing his attitude. Leo stroked his forehead speechlessly. Well, I think one day later, I will be able to succeed, and I will break through immediately, this time I will delay another day. Stretched out his hand, the metal blocks piled together in the corner of the wall flew over, turned into pieces of accessories, and attached to Leo's body. 
stepped forward, picked up a high-tech Bluetooth headset from the table, and put it on his ear. Jarvis. Jarvis, are you there? Mr. Leo, what's the matter? Can you connect to Mr. Stark's armor? Yes, Mr. Leo. With a wave of his hand, a piece of silver metal flew over and quickly turned into a helmet similar to Mark III, attached to Leo's head, with the headphones still on. A small white and silver armor was completed in this way. It weighed more than 200 caddies, and there was nothing, just a movable iron shell. There are no holes in the eyes, only a few small breathing openings are left, which can facilitate Leo's breathing. The white armor floated without any fireworks, flew out quickly, and left Tony's villa. Looking at the dark night sky, even if the golden eyes are open, Tony can't be seen. Jarvis which direction is Mr. Stark? Mr. Leo, it's east of you. Looking around, Leo quickly flew up. Accelerated to follow, faster and faster. With the defense of the attached metal, Leo was able to increase the speed by 200 meters per second, and moved forward at high speed. Within half a minute of flying, Jarvis's voice came out, Mr. Leo, you can't catch up with Mr. Stark. The average speed of Mark III is 300 meters per second, and the high speed can reach a little bit. 3 Mach. Leo opened his eyes slightly when he heard it, and a circle of golden light emerged from the silver armor. The golden mesh circle appeared on the outside of the armor, and it seemed to be greatly deformed. The exact appearance cannot be judged, but each line has become more solid, as if it really exists. But under the golden light, Leo tried hard. A slow-moving golden spot instantly turned into a golden light, across the dark night sky, and hurried forward. Jarvis, help me contact Mr. Stark. Connecting to Mr. Stark. At this time, Leo judged that his current speed should be close to 500 meters per second, and he should be approaching Mr. Stark quickly. Mr. Leo, Mr. Stark refused to answer. Well, I'm not trying to stop him from going there, really, Jarvis, how far is I from Stark? Leo couldn't laugh or cry. About nearly 17 kilometers, at your current speed, it is estimated that you can catch up with Mr. Stark in 90 seconds. Mr. Leo, you have deviated from the direction, please shift it 20 degrees to the right. Leo turned slightly, chasing Tony. After a minute and a half, Leo had already seen the red golden steel figure ahead. After another two seconds, the silver armor wrapped in golden light came directly to Mark III. Jarvis, connect with Mr. Stark. Leo, why are you here, how did you do it? Within a second, Tony's exclamation voice came from the headphones. Mr. Stark, this is also one of my abilities. It was only inspired after the last incident. You know, I am very low-key. Leo talked to Tony through headphones. Leo, it's not a joke to go out this time. I don't want to hurt you. I can do it alone. Tony is still flying in front of him. They must have gone to Gemira because of Ethan. Whether it is Ethan or Stark Industrial Weapons, I can't just sit back and watch. Then what do you want to do? Leo asked. Destroy my weapon. I'll be with you. This is the first actual test of the Mark III, I don't want to miss it. Leo flew side by side with Tony. Tony did not speak, but his feelings for Leo deepened. Perhaps at this moment, Tony finally truly regarded Leo as a partner. Mark III's hands also shot out flames, and the speed increased a bit, the air around the armor fluctuated strongly, and an explosion sounded out of thin air. Mark III has entered a supersonic state. Leo also followed. Above the clouds, two figures, one gold and one red, flew quickly to Gemira. Mr. Stark, will we be targeted by satellites? No, our size is too small. Unless the military has a satellite that monitors a place, we can only be found if we break in, but we will not pass through the military's test area. Tony said confidently. Mr. Stark, do you think you can stop the tank shells? I have calculated it, there should be no problem, why would you ask this question? Tony asked strangely. I was thinking, if a tank shell comes over, you say I can't save you. Take care of yourself, don't want me to save you later. Leo also smiled, and the two accelerated a little more. In the small town of Gemira, there are only a few dilapidated buildings left in the small town. The walls of the bungalows are all covered with gunshots, and there are desperate crying all around. All the freedom fighters with guns seemed to be killing people for fun, shooting at random with guns at the running refugee crowd. 
drove seven or eight refugees to a room, and then dropped a grenade. There was no sound after a loud noise in the room. There were also some soldiers who captured all the women and children, and hurried all the men to the wall, facing the wall, holding their heads and preparing to kill them all. Among them, the bearded deputy leader who once brought Tony out of the cave also stood in the middle and commanded. Bring all the women into the car, hurry up, put the weapon over there. Get everyone out of the house. Catch him. Saw a man holding his two children and his wife and wanted to run away. S men beat the man to the ground with a rifle, and dragged the woman and two children to the truck. Shoot with others. Waved his hand to let his men drag the man to the wall and stand. His son cried loudly, Dad, Dad. He broke free. The father also struggled to escape and ran to hug his son. The deputy chief walked up by himself, pulled the boy up, and threw it back. Directly kicked him to the ground, stepped on his father's feet with all his strength, and said to the soldier beside him. Kill him, you trash. Turned around and walked away, to look elsewhere. The soldier pulled his father up and knelt on the ground, raised the rifle in his hand and pressed it against his head. The mother beside helplessly covered the heads of her daughter and son, and was about to see her father die in front of them. A whistling sound came from the air. Everyone looked up, a red gold steel armor came down from a high altitude, with both hands spraying down to slow down, and kneeling down as a buffer. Tony Stark is here. Another silver armor, but quietly fell without any movement, like a foam, stood silently on the ground. Although it looks only three-fifths the height of the red and gold armor beside him, it is even more terrifying. Immediately someone shot Tony and the two of them, and the brass bullet bounced off the armor, which didn't have any effect at all. Mark III stepped forward and punched the nearest soldier with a gun. He flew seven or eight meters away, flew to the side and fell off the wall on the second floor, and died directly. Three consecutive pulse cannons in the palm of the hand took away the three shooters around. Turned around and pointed his hands at the soldiers in front of the truck who were binding women and children. But all the five people used the hostages in their arms as shields, preventing Tony from using the palm pulse cannon to attack. The energy light in his hand slowly extinguished, but Jarvis directly locked the heads of the five robbers on the screen. Two rows of small automatic machine guns suddenly appeared on both shoulders. Twelve rounds of small bullets were fired out, guaranteed that each person would taste two rounds, a fatal blow. The machine gun was retracted, but the movement directly caused the tied women and children to take a step back, with deep fear in their eyes. They didn't react until the child rushed out and hugged his father and knelt down in fear. Tony didn't forget the beard he saw. Jarvis turned on the scanning system and judged that the beard was hiding behind the wall and was about to make a call. Tony punched through the wall and directly dragged him out, threw him into the crowd. He is yours now. Mr. Stark, don't you want to kill him yourself? Leo asked, watching the whole process. I think I killed him and made him so happy. All right, then I will go to the other side, you continue, then I will find you. Leo and Tony are separated. He believes that Tony, after all, also has the protagonist halo protection, there should be no accidents. There are still fierce fights around. No, it should be a massacre. This small square is just the tip of the iceberg. Leo came to another location, watching the freedom fighters still slaughtering the unresistible civilians, and his heart surged with anger. Walked over, and the three fighters were shooting at the refugees. The guns in their hands were one card, the trigger turned into a finger knife, and the fingers were directly divided into two. The guns were also thrown on the ground, but they floated up again, and the guns were aimed at themselves. Dozens of bullets exploded and shot out, smashing them one by one into flesh and blood sieve. More and more people discovered this strange silver figure, and their guns were aimed at this side. Hundreds of barrage consisting of more than a dozen guns were all set three meters away from Leo. In the next instant, they all reflected back, directly hitting their foreheads, and their heads were lost. Leo was really merciless towards them, got up and flew, passing by at low altitude, like a harvester. Where passed by, all gunmen died instantly. Whoever lets them hold metal guns in their hands, with one thought, the fragments of the guns can penetrate their heads. If Leo's spirit hadn't been only 19 points, I must have cut the grass a bit faster. Tony's side, because the Mark III is not equipped with many weapons, the soldiers are not clear, and they flew directly to their weapons arsenal. 
The main purpose is to destroy these weapons from Stark Industries. Jarvis even retrieved the existence of 12 Jericho missiles in that small town. Just flew high, and before he could accelerate, there was a sudden violent explosion on his chest. The huge power directly shot down the Mark III, and a big hole was smashed into the ground. Seventy meters away, the gun barrel of a tank was emitting a faint blue smoke. Just now a 1400 meter per second speed tank shell hit the Mark III. Five seconds later, a steel arm propped up, and Mark III stood up again. However, there were many shrapnel scratches on the chest, arms, and armor on the mask, and a lot of paint was rubbed off. Tony faced the tank not far away. Under Jarvis's scan, he found that another shell was loaded, controlling the Mark III slightly to one side, and a shell grazing from his chest. Stark also raised his right hand, and raised a miniature missile on his forearm and launched it. With a light, ding, the missile was mounted on the body of the tank, but there was no movement. Waiting for Tony to turn around and prepare to leave. Bang, a violent explosion sounded, and a 60-ton tank turned into a huge fireball, and the body wreckage was flying in all directions. Continued to walk to the place where the weapons were stored, and there were more than a dozen soldiers with guns shooting wildly at Tony. Tony looked at the Jericho missiles, the Mark III directly lifted into the air, mid-air, using the palm pulse cannon of both hands to hit the Jericho missile on the ground with all his strength. Caused a violent explosion, and detonated all the surrounding weapons, but in just two seconds, in this small building group full of weapons and ammunition, it caused a big explosion, creating a huge fire with a radius of more than 1,000 meters. And Tony also soared into the sky from the explosion of the sea of fire, just like in Afghanistan, the past reappears. On the other side, the bald boss was driving with the convoy a few kilometers away, but he saw that his weaponry was suddenly blown up. At the same time, he also saw that little flying figure, which reminded him of his fear a few months ago. Leo is continuing to patrol, and nearly 70 people have been killed. Now, there are no gunshots in all the surrounding areas, and Leo seems to smell fear. Hearing the explosion sound a few kilometers away, and the flames soaring to the sky, he didn't stop for more, chasing the figure in the sky. But it caused such a big movement here, and it has been targeted by military satellites. Edward Air Force Base, has been staring at the satellite display of the small town of Gemira, marking a fast flying object in red, and the explosion has caused quite a stir here. There is a UFO. Not the Air Force. Have you contacted the CIA? A soldier returned, I got in touch with them, and they are about to ask if it's us. Sir, that is definitely not our plane. Several other soldiers who contacted also reported, not the Navy, or, nor the Marine Corps. I need the answer, can I see the target? The colonel asked angrily. No, I cannot confirm my identity. Call Colonel Rod from the Weapon Development Department right away, the officer said. Leo quickly caught up with Mark III and flew side by side. Mr. Stark, it seems not easy. Leo looked at the scratches on Mark III, looking a little miserable. I was hit by a tank, Leo, is your mouth made by God? Tony said angrily. What do you think, Mark III? There are still many areas that need to be improved. Take your time, but we still have to solve the problems of Stark Industries. Tony is now wholeheartedly concerned about his own weapons. 20 minutes later. Leo, don't you want a reactor? Yeah, Mr. Stark, are you going to send me one? Leo was a little surprised, you know how much Tony attaches importance to the reactor. You can give it to you, although you don't know what you are going to do, but there are preconditions. You can't bring out the room and you can't reveal any technology inside. If you are useless, you must return it to me immediately. Tony also said seriously, the arc reactor is related to too many things, and if it accidentally leaks out, the influence can be no less than a nuclear bomb. Of course, I'm just curious if it will help me. Leo, you said you can predict the future, then tell me, can we get home smoothly? Tony was also relieved and joked. If your good friend Rod did not call, I think it should go well. Just after Leo finished speaking, Tony's phone reminder appeared on Tony's panel. What's the situation? Leo, Rod called. Hello. Tony. Rod's puzzled voice came from the other end. Leo also became a little serious. Although Tony hadn't heard from him yet, 
he had already sensed the two fighter jets were approaching them quickly, and they were not kind. Tony is still sloppy with Rod. Tony, are you sure you don't hide any high-tech weapons here? No. That's good, I'm staring at two UFOs, and we plan to blow them back to my hometown. Two Condor fighter jets descended from an altitude of 6,000 meters to the same height as the Mark III, closely following behind. Tony still doesn't want to tell Rhodes the news, after hanging up. Leo, there are two fighters behind, can you resist it? Yes, there is no problem. Leo was also a little timid, but it was only the first time he reacted to this situation. Anyway, there should be no problem running away. Tony turned around and flew to the left, while Leo turned to the right, and the two separated. The two fighters behind him naturally followed each other and separated. Command room, this is Shishin Whip number. One, number. Two, I see them, they are separated. Shen Whip one, what is that? Rod asked nervously. I do not know. Can I get a radio contact? There was no response to the sir. Then you can attack. Another colonel on the side said directly. Tony and Leo both noticed their attacking trend and accelerated at the same time, directly breaking through the sound barrier. But for fighters, it's normal for a fighter to break through one mock speed, so keep up. Two fighters fired a missile at the same time, and the flame jet missile directly broke through twice the speed of sound, biting the two in front tightly. Leo felt the flying missile, but couldn't help but smiled and arched his nose lightly. The missile behind him directly ignored the thrust of the flame, dropped straight down, and rushed over the desolate Gobi below. Continued to fly forward, regardless of the fighters behind him. Tony's side, the missile behind him quickly approached, and Jarvis reminded, the missile is coming. A jamming bomb occurred. A small disc appeared on the outside of the thighs on both sides, and dozens of tiny incendiary bombs spun out, detonating the missile in advance. The huge energy of the missile explosion pushed Tony out violently, disrupting the rhythm of the flight, and panicked. The Mark III could not help but descend several hundred meters before regaining his stature. Flew up again and returned to the clouds. Shen Whip No. 1 followed well trained, and started shooting with heavy machine guns on the plane. The bullets formed a whip and waved in the air. Tony made an evasive action, and still inevitably a few bullets hit him, knocking Mark III skewed. This is no way, Tony is too passive. Open the ailerons. The ailerons used for emergency braking opened, and Tony's speed was instantly reduced. With the speed of the fighter, Tony came behind the fighter. While the magic whip one decelerated, Tony accelerated again, hiding directly under the fighter's fuselage. And Leo was still flying headstrongly in front of the fighter, no matter whether the magic whip two fired a bullet or a missile, all of them did not hit the tiny silver shadow. Under Leo's control, the machine gun bullets passed a few centimeters along his side, and the missiles were all shot to the side and couldn't get close at all. But the pilot of Magic Whip 2 just thought that his bullet had missed, and he was out of luck, and the missile's self-guided system also had an error. But without a shot, the pilot has begun to doubt his life. Shinbian number 1 thought that the target had been eliminated, reported the pass to the command room, and approached Shinbian number 2 to help jointly shoot down another mysterious target. Tony hiding under the plane can't hold it anymore. Whether it was the previous tank shell, the Sidewinder missile and the machine gun bullet, Tony was deeply tired and his body was already a little unwell. Rod's personal phone rang, and it was Tony Stark who called it back. Seeing the electric display, Lord, who knows Tony's temperament well, guessed something. He looked nervous and walked aside to pick it up. Hi, Rod, it's me. What? I'm sorry, it's me, the flying object you just asked about is me. Don't make trouble, listen, this is not a game, you can't get civilian equipment into my battlefield, do you understand? That's not a device, I'm inside, that's a shell, I'm the flying object. Tony shouted nervously, the armor equipment had been damaged outside the fuselage, and even his virtual panel had begun to be a little unstable. And the two fighters have already gathered together. Now they are chasing Leo, Tony can't take care of that much, telling his friends, Tony is also relieved. Rod could not accept it for a while, and looked at the silver figure on the screen in a daze, Tony has become smaller. Single quote. The two fighters fired at Leo at the same time, and countless bullets shot at Leo. Leo, 
who has only 19 mental points, is still unable to control all the bullets so accurately. He has to wave his hand. All the bullets consciously avoid him, forming an abnormal blank in the barrage. Area. Leo even wanted to stop the fighter jet directly, but realized that Tony was still hiding under the plane, and the pilot was just an uninformed person executing the order, so he did not do so. However, Shinbian No. 2 still found the figure under Shinbian No. 1's fuselage and informed. Magic Whip No. 1 began to accelerate and spun frantically. After a few laps, Tony couldn't hold it, his hands were loosened, and the whole person flew backwards. Swiped past Leo and smashed at the Condor 2 behind him. Leo took control of Mark 3 and pulled it to his side together. Mr. Stark, I think we have to speed up. Leo looked at the two fighters that were chasing after him, and his heart was crossed. The golden light on his body was brighter again. He directly increased from Mach 1 to Mach 3, which was also Leo's temporary limit speed. Threw the two fighter planes far away at once. Catch up, relock, if you have a chance, shoot down directly. The colonel in the command room shouted. The two fighters accelerated again, biting behind them. Colonel, we don't know what we are going to shoot. Recall the fighter. Rod stopped the colonel and said. The thing appeared in the legal no-fly zone, and no response was given. Divine whip number one, if given the opportunity, immediately shoot it down. The colonel in the command room is not ashamed of Colonel Rod from the weapons research and development department. The two fighters continued to shoot at the two of them. At the same time, the Mark III could not withstand such a high speed for a long time, and the projection screen was already very unstable. Leo, the Mark III cannot carry such a high speed. I hope Road will let the plane leave as soon as possible. Stark shouted. Mr. Stark, are you going to kill two planes? Don't. The two fighters fired countless bullets again, wiping them by their sides. Perhaps we can shoot down one plane to ensure the safety of the pilot, but I will only lose one plane. Leo flipped his palm, and the wings of the Magic Whip No. 1 fighter broke at the same time, bursting into flames, and the fuselage could not fly stably, began to spin, and fell rapidly. Ejection skydiving, skydiving. The cabin opened, and a figure ejected out. The fighter slowed down, and Leo also let go of the Mark III. Sir, a malfunction has been detected in the parachuting pilot's device. Jarvis scanned because of Tony's attention. The tail of Mark III flare up, and it rushes down quickly, following the falling figure. The command room is also in chaos. If there are casualties, it will cause great public opinion, and they will all bear heavy responsibility. Leo also rushed off, the Magic Whip 2 still dived down the atmosphere in the command room was tense, and it seemed to have judged the movement of the flying object, and prayed silently. Mark III, chasing up, opened the parachute's touch device with a punch, and the umbrella body opened successfully. The command room was also a carnival, so everyone cheered. Rod even persuaded him, and forcibly summoned Divine Whip No. 2 back. As soon as the nose lifted, Divine Whip No. 1 lifted off again, preparing to return. Rod's voice came from inside Mark III, Tony, are you still listening? Hey, thank you. Oh my god, you asterisk 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 is crazy, Rod said with a relaxed and frightened smile, you owe me a fighter, you know. But strictly speaking, I also saved one, didn't I? Tony laughed happily. Then do you want to come and see what I am studying now? No, 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 the less I know, the better, how can I deal with the media now? Just talk about drills, don't you usually fool you like this? Leo listened to the story of Tony and Rod along the way, and flew back to the seaside villa in Malibu. On Rhodes's side, the media heard the news and quickly gathered in government departments. The Air Force also immediately held a press conference. Rod still used this exercise training technique to describe the flight accident, which also explained some of the situation in the small town of Gemila, and clarified that the U.S. government was absolutely not involved in the explosion. Obadiah sat at home watching the live broadcast on TV, frowned, and realized that things were not simple. Contact my plane, I'm going to Gemira. Obadiah raised the phone in his hand. Helped me, so I have known Rod for more than 10 years and trust him. Tony is a little chattering all the way. I know, otherwise you can't find him before the development of the Mark II. Are you afraid that he will leak out? No. Tony believed Rhodes very much. Flew home, 
Leo just stood still, waved his hands, the silver armor on his body spread out and piled back against the wall. Huh, it's still so comfortable, it's too uncomfortable to be covered in armor. Leo moved his body and poured a glass of water to drink. Tony also stood back on the experimental control panel, and eight robotic arms stretched out, preparing to disassemble the Mark III. But after experiencing such a terrible blow, some small parts have been damaged and twisted, making it difficult to disassemble. Ah. Oh oh. In addition, there were some redness, swelling and damage on his body, and Tony was not a safe person. He kept twisting his body, hoping to guide the position by himself, but he kept calling out. Jarvis was also helpless. This is a tight-fitting design, sir, the more you struggle, the more painful it will be. Take it lightly, this is the first time I have done this. Leo watched this funny scene from the sidelines, and couldn't help but smile. There was a clatter of high heels from the stairs beside. A beautiful shadow walked down, and Pepper was sorting three documents in his hands. Was about to open the door, looked up, where is the door? Through the door frame, he directly saw the steel figure standing on the console. Leo also suppressed his smile and watched the shocked Pepper walk over step by step. Tony, with his back to the door, is still struggling with the armor, my design should be able to take off. This must be taken off. Please don't move, sir. It was the first time I saw the formed Mark III, I believe this super cool set of steel armor will surprise anyone. But Pepper walked to Tony's side and asked in surprise in a little panic. What happened? Is that a bullet mark? Others pay attention to the scenery in front of you, I only feel sorry for the sadness behind you. Leo thought, this is Pepper's feelings for Tony. Tony was also slightly embarrassed. Although he was very happy in his heart, he was still talking. Don't make a fuss, you haven't seen it when I was even more embarrassed. Pepper's eyes were shocked, angry, and heartache. Wanted to step forward to help, but in the face of the invulnerable steel armor, Pepper couldn't start. Not to mention Pepper, even Jarvis was a little confused. The design of Mark III seemed to have some small problems. Pepper, you go up first, I'll fix it, I have something to ask you for help. After Pepper left, Tony called to Leo. Smile, why don't you come over and help me untie my armor? Leo came to Tony's face. Tony, wearing armor, was two meters tall. I don't know how taller than Leo was. However, facing Leo, he was so weak. Looking at Mark III in front of him, Leo closed his eyes slightly, and stretched out his finger to tap Tony slightly. Suddenly, all the parts of Mark III were forcibly unfolded, and dozens of octagonal bolts used to fix the armor were all quickly rotated and unloaded. After slackened, all the parts floated out of thin air. Then the Mark III armor was reassembled on the side, all the bolts were twisted again, the parts were fastened, and they were restored to their original state. With a soft bang, they stood on the ground. Mr. Stark, I think that Mark IV should be upgraded, at least free to disassemble the armor. Leo smiled happily. Tony moved his body, looking at the complete Mark III on the side, a drop of cold sweat couldn't help but drip on his forehead. Leo, fortunately, I know you first, your ability is really terrible. It seems that I really want to improve my armor. Tony looked at Mark III and said. The prototype of Mark IV has appeared in his rapidly turning mind, but in the depths of his mind, there seems to be another idea. Mr. Stark, then I'll go back to the room first. You have a good rest. By the way, Mr. Stark, can you show me the arc reactor? Tony also slapped his head, turned around and looked for it on the table, and found a bright reactor from a drawer. Stuffed into Leo's hands, don't forget the promise. I remember, you can't bring out the room, you can't reveal any technology inside. If it doesn't work, you must return it to you immediately. By the way, Mr. Stark, how many have you rebuilt? Just one, why do you need so many things, the more, the greater the danger, I have one is enough. Mr. Stark, it's the same thing. You still have to prepare for everything. Once your chest is removed, there is an emergency, right? Tony smiled, not caring. Leo also reluctantly walked upstairs and returned to his room. Tony Stark is still an arrogant, narcissist, and may be slightly better in front of Leo, but he will not listen to Leo's every word in his heart regarding the matter. Even if Leo possesses magical predictive ability, Tony only believes in himself, just as he does not want to know more about the future. 
Leo looked at the two tons of gold titanium alloy in the room, the arc reactor in his hand, and a large box of high-calorie food that had been prepared on the bed. Faced the inexplicable panel in his mind, and started to eat. Control point. 99 feet. Power 19 defense 19 speed 19 spirit 19 inches. Skills. D-level metal control and C-level physical enhancement. Strengthening. Golden eye, 100%, copper skin, 100%, steel bar, 99%, iron bone, 0%. Derivative technique, destroying golden eyes, don't be fooled by any abilities, see through all illusions, enhance visual observation, metalize objects. Don't move the golden body, enhance great defense power, stand on the ground with both feet, you will have infinite physical strength, the body will recover faster, and will not be moved by external force. No matter how I practiced recently, I haven't made any progress, but the energy in my mind was immediately consumed, like a scoop of water poured into the dry rice field, without any effect. Leo remembered the last incident of absorbing electric energy. Although he was hurt a lot, it was undeniable that it did supplement energy. So Leo obeyed instinct and asked for this reactor from Tony's hands. Looking at the bright and glowing little reactor in his hand, I was also full of expectations. Obadiah had arrived at Jemira and contacted the boss of the Freedom Fighter, the bald man. Two bald heads stood face to face, but the boss laughed. Obadiah also met with the Freedom Fighter boss for the first time after the incident. At first glance, he paid attention to the burned half of his head. This is a meeting gift from Tony Stark. If you kill him earlier, you won't lose face. Obadiah said calmly, still not forgetting his faint smile. Everybody has a price, you don't have enough money. Obadiah no longer wanted to continue to wrestle with him, his smile disappeared, show me the weapon. You come in, the bodyguard stays outside. The bald boss said. Obadiah waved his hand, and seven or eight bodyguards in black stood quietly behind him, seemingly very obedient. The first time he entered the tent, he saw Mark I, which had been put together under the light, standing in the center of the tent. Obadiah walked over and carefully observed the Mark I that Tony had built in two months. The bald boss continued, meaning that he tried to exchange Mark I and drawings for a group of steel soldiers. Obadiah couldn't help but sneered, and put his left hand on his shoulder, gently pushing his fingers, a small sonic paralysis device opened, and countless special wavelengths impacted the nerve center in his head. Countless black blood vessels appeared on the side of the bald boss's brain. He couldn't move his body, even his eyes couldn't blink, only his breathing continued barely. Technology will always be your Achilles heel. Obadir took two floodlight small cracked headphones from his ears. The bald boss has bloodshot eyes, but his pupils can still move slightly, looking at the smiling Obadiah in anger and fear. Don't worry, it's only 15 minutes. If there is a big trouble, you can worry about it slowly. Strode out of the tent. At this moment, the seven or eight bodyguards of Obadiah outside had forced a dozen soldiers with guns to kneel together. This is the crushing of technological equipment. Take away the iron armor inside, all right, let's clear the scene. Countless gunshots rang out, directly killing all the remaining kneeling soldiers. Obadiah didn't care about the life and death of these soldiers. He sat back in the car and called his confidant directly. Build the 16th area under the arc oscillating reactor, proceed in secret, get the best engineers, and immediately build a prototype for me. That night, Leo finished eating a whole box of snacks, holding the caution arc reactor in his hand, and two huge metal plates surrounded him. Sitting on the ground, countless golden light appeared from the surrounding gold titanium alloy, and the brilliant golden dots melted into Leo's body, constantly strengthening Leo's meridians, and there are those roots lurking in the body. Golden silk thread in. The silk thread gradually became more and more solid, and at the same time, from the main trunk, it seemed to be expanding outward, extending the silk pattern, forming a strange scene. The energy in my mind is also consumed quickly. In the face of such high-quality metal, the energy brought by food in my brain is also consumed quickly. In just one hour, one-third of the one ton of gold titanium alloy has been consumed. But the mental energy that can be practiced for six hours in the face of ordinary alloys has already been consumed. It is reasonable that Leo should stop and continue practicing at this time. After all, to continue is an act that the body instinct resists. 
He looked at the reactor and concentrated his thoughts on the reactor. The originally calm arc reactor also started to get brighter and brighter, and the energy in it began to agitate a bit, leaking powerful electricity to the outside through the contacts below. The exposed electric light passed through Leo's arm and was directly pulled in by a strong suction force. In his mind, a light blue energy poured in. Unlike the light gray energy of food, the energy level of this energy seems to be higher, and the speed used for cultivation is also faster. The gold titanium alloy around him began to change rapidly, and the golden light dots surged into Leo's body. This time, the golden light not only strengthens the meridians, but also the flesh, skin, internal organs, and even a little golden light penetrates into the bones. Leo closed his eyes, and the smile on his face was getting bigger and bigger. At this moment, the current flowing from the reactor had covered his arms. Burned his sleeves into ashes, but the arm under the electric light was still white with a hint of golden light. Time passed bit by bit, and the barrier in front of Leo became thinner and thinner. It's almost, it's almost. Single quote. Leo's expression is getting more and more excited, as if he is about to step into a new world. But the light of the reactor in his hand gradually weakened, and the two still shining electric currents also decreased, and they withdrew from both arms a little bit. Intel completely disappeared, there was no light in the arc reactor. Leo also opened his eyes immediately, looking helplessly at the exhausted reactor in his hand, and put it aside. It's a little bit close. If there is another reactor, I think it will succeed. There is still no change in the attribute panel, but I can feel that my body is much stronger than before, and even my eyes and ears are clearer. It seems that my mental power has also increased a lot. Looking at those 19-point attributes that have not changed, Leo also realized that 19 to 20 is no longer a point, it may be two different realms. Seeing a ray of sunshine outside the window, Leo also laughed and lay down on the bed. It seems that I haven't had a good sleep for a long time. Single quote. The asterisk 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 flicked gently, and the broken metal scattered around gathered into small squares and piled aside. And there were 25 kilograms of intact gold titanium alloy left, and flew over the room. Looking at this small lump of high-grade metal, it slowly changed. After a while, it became the appearance of Mark III, another became Captain America, and after a while, it became a little spider. Seeing this extremely strong piece of metal constantly changing like a ball of mercury, Leo also suddenly sat up. Should I also get a suit? Single quote. Pajamas and Iron Spider-Man are completely two heroes, okay. Single quote. But taking a look at his own hands, Leo lay down again, I'm so young, and people can guess when I wear clothes. Felt his stomach, I'm so hungry, I want to eat fried chicken. Obadiah has begun to secretly build the armor, right below the huge arc reactor in the factory. More than a dozen scientific and technical personnel in white clothes are constantly operating, and a prototype of the Iron Overlord has also appeared. Obadiah looked at the design of his armor, Using the relationship of Mark I drawing, it was very similar, even the reactor hole on the chest was made exactly the same. Looking at Mark I beside him, Obadiah reached out and fumbled around the reactor hole, his eyes glowing, expecting something. Leo walked out of the room, went straight to the kitchen, watched the refrigerator full of ingredients, and calmly started cooking. In less than an hour, a table full of delicious meals was made. Yes, these are Leo's mornings. Looking at the steaming steak in front of him, Leo gulped, enjoying the only pleasure of food. Although it can't fill his stomach, chewing is also fun. I ate a piece of steak and cut the next piece naturally, but after only two bites, Leo discovered a very serious problem. He can't eat it anymore. Leo widened his eyes and looked at his chubby belly. This was something he had never seen before. W.H., how is it possible? Single quote. This is the first time Leo feels full, and also the first time he feels the fullness of his stomach. This happy and beautiful feeling from the depths of the soul made Leo squinted his eyes, lying on the sofa and touching his belly. I have been in this world for five years. I have never experienced this wonderful feeling. I have always been in a state of slight hunger. Even if a large amount of food enters the stomach, it will quickly turn into energy, and it will be stored in the mind to prepare for the follow-up practice, which is uncontrollable. 
To be honest, this feeling used to drive Leo crazy, but time will always smooth everything out. Under this kind of life-threatening activity, Leo slowly got used to this hunger pang. As a result, Leo was full today, and his instinctive pleasure made Leo lazily not want to move, and quietly spread out on the sofa. Tony walked up at this time and saw Leo in the hall. What did you do? You look like a person who shot your arm in a small alley. You won't actually touch that thing. No, I'm just full, so cool. Fat. Tony looked at the kitchen, did you eat one cow? Or two? In Stark's impression, he has never seen Leo full. Now Leo's state is terrible. Leo turned over and sat up. Mr. Stark, I think it should be the cause of the arc reactor. Now I don't have to continue to eat like crazy to replenish my energy. You can absorb electricity. Do you know how much energy this reactor has? Leo waved, his door opened, and the reactor in the room floated out and fell into Tony's hands. I have already absorbed it, maybe I need one more, Mr. Stark, hee <laughs> hee. Leo looked at Tony with a smile. Tony hurried to the studio with the reactor in his hand, Jarvis, scan the reactor. Okay, sir, the scan is over. The palladium metal has been consumed, and the interior of the reactor has been damaged due to the overloaded operation. It needs to be readjusted to restart. Opened the reactor, a circle of palladium metal inside has been finely gelled, and a trace of unpleasant smell is emitted. Tony frowned, this reactor is enough for my Mark III to fight for 10 days. He actually ran out in one night. What did Leo do? Jarvis, prepare the materials again, make one more, oh no, two. Okay, Mr. Stark. Tony returned to the living room, looking at Leo who was sitting at the table and continuing to eat. Leo, you should eat in the future. One of my reactors will be enough for you to eat for a year. Don't, Mr. Stark, the energy level of the food is too low, I can't practice anymore, but the reactor is strong. Leo couldn't help thinking of the light blue energy and licked his lips. Aren't you full, why are you still eating, do you want to experience the taste of death? Tony looked at Leo, who was still eating. It seemed that all he saw just now were fantasies. He was still the big stomach king. Leo touched his flat stomach, don't waste food, I can still eat. Actually just now, Leo discovered that he seemed to have found the switch of the melting pot of his stomach, and he could choose whether to absorb the food in his stomach and turn it into energy. All the uncontrollable things were absorbed before, without asking Leo's opinion. Based on the principle of not wasting, Leo still cleaned all the food at the table. Of course, Tony was also full by the way and returned to the basement. It will take some time for the reactor to be manufactured. Leo went to the studio and watched Tony repairing the damage to the Mark III. At the same time, he was also studying how to better dismantle the armor. Mr. Stark, what do you think about these weapons? Someone in the company is making a ghost, and it's probably Obadi. Tony's hand movement slowed down, thinking of what Obadi said to him at the party, and now he can't accept it. So, just leave it alone, let me think about it go out and play by yourself, and the reactor will be for you at night. Tony continued to work, ignoring Leo. Leo touched his bulging belly, and there was a trace of sleepiness in his heart, or else, go take a nap. Single quote. Facing this unprecedented experience, Leo returned to the room, lay on the bed, and fell asleep with a full stomach and a beautiful smile. In the evening, Pepper came to the underground studio. Tony was still dealing with Mark III, saw Pepper, and put down his work. Hey, Pepper, are you busy now? Do something for me. I want you to go to my office, hack into the host computer, and get back all the recent shipping lists. This is a secret chip. Tony faced Pepper who had been looking at him, and handed over a USB flash drive style chip. You can get in with this. It may be in the administrative folder or in the hidden disk. In that case, you can find the one with the smallest number. With that, Tony himself went back to the workbench and explained all the possible problems. Pepper glanced at the USB flash drive in his hand and looked at Tony seriously. If I get the list back, what are you going to do? The old way, if it is a secret transaction, I will stop it, find my weapon, and then destroy it. Tony. Pepper couldn't bear to say something, and smiled bitterly, but his eyes were a little bit teary, you know I am willing to do anything for you. But if you want to mess around like last time, I can't help you. 
Pepper said seriously. I only need the list, not to show it to anyone, not to make money, nor to sign any contracts. The voice grew louder. Tony turned around stared at Pepper with wide eyes, I have to do this, nothing more. Really. Pepper looked at Tony quietly. Then I will resign. He said these words with tears in his eyes, put the chip in his hand on the table, and turned to leave. Tony never thought that such a situation would happen. Pepper never refused his request, but this time. Looking at Pepper who turned and left, Tony changed his usual detached personality and said calmly and deeply. You have been standing on my side for so many years. You were there when I made money by destroying everywhere. Now, when I want to protect those who are suffering because of me, you are leaving me. Pepper only cared about Tony's safety and replied directly. Tony, this will kill you, I can't push you. Tony sat down, and thought of those who had helped him in times of crisis and lost their lives, the young soldiers who stopped him in the jeep, and Ethan who saved his life in the cave. There are also refugees who lost their lives innocently because of their weapons, and countless blood appeared in front of them. Tony lowered his head and said dully, if not for this belief. I should have died long ago. I'm not crazy, Pepper, I just finally understand what I should do, and I know from the bottom of my heart that it's the right thing to do. Pepper saw that Tony was so deep for the first time. Tony never said what happened during his three months in Afghanistan. No one has experienced his life, who knows if he lived like years in those days. Pepper looked at Tony who was sitting on the chair helpless and lost, a trace of distress flashed in his eyes. Came over, hesitated to pick up the chip on the table, and Tony turned his head. Do you know that you are everything to me? Pepper left in high heels, and Tony looked at Pepper's back with a smile on his face. Early the next morning, Pepper came to Stark Industries, clutched the USB flash drive, and walked to Tony's office. But now it has become Obadi's office. Leo stretched out and got up from the bed, wow, it's so comfortable, how long did I sleep? Single quote. Looking at the bright sun, Leo moved his body for a while, turned around and went to the kitchen, tasted the taste of being full, and yearned more and more for food. By the way, made a copy and brought it to the basement, Mr. Stark, we have dinner. Do you think it is better to have a tight-fitting design or a bigger one? If you have a larger design, you can add a lot of things. Tony stood in front of Mark III, rubbing his beard. Tight-fitting, tight-fitting design, it looks good now. Yeah, I think so too, still a little more handsome. Tony also looked at Mark III and nodded. Turned around and started to eat breakfast, Leo, I almost have the design of Mark IV, I want to design a movable multi-manipulator disassembly device, and strive to control the time within one minute. And I have to design a function that allows me to go to the toilet. I almost couldn't hold back the time when I flew so long last time. Mr. Stark, that reactor. Leo looked at Tony expectantly. Stark pulled out two luminous reactors from a drawer on the side, and put them in front of Leo, for these two, I said that billions of dollars are available for purchase, do you believe it? Hey, thank you Mr. Stark. Leo took the two reactors in his hands and said with a smile. But after thinking about it, I put one back. Mr. Stark, I said it last time. If someone takes the one on your chest, you still have to keep one for spare. Tony chuckled slightly, but took the one back and put it aside. All right, Leo, did you see something? Yes, I think you have a major crisis recently, but the exact time is not clear, and the source of the crisis is one of the people you trust the most. Leo looked at Tony cautiously and said. Tony also frowned, how can someone harm me? Although Obi did hurt me that day, he shouldn't. As he said, Tony himself became unsure. Mr. Stark, stay vigilant, I am going to continue practicing, and when I break through, I will protect you. Leo said to Stark, facing the hurdle in front of him, he couldn't wait to cross it. Don't worry, I'll be fine. I bought two tons of gold titanium alloy. You can use it first. Mark IV has to think about it. Tony took a bite of the sandwich and said. Leo returned to the room and looked at the bright reactor in his hand, as well as two tons of brand new gold titanium alloy. He was full of confidence. This time he could definitely break the limit. Sit down cross-legged and continue to practice. The time is now 10.30 in the morning. Pepper passed through dozens of office spaces and came to the innermost office. He pushed aside gently, and there was no one inside. 
Pepper also sighed in relief and quietly closed the door. Some hurriedly sat in front of the computer. The computer in the screen saver state, with a tap, requires a username and password to log in. Quickly took out the chip USB flash drive given by Tony and inserted it in. A red warning word appeared on the screen, but at the same time, a panel full of complex codes also popped up, which kept flashing. Within five seconds, he successfully cracked the defense of the computer and entered the main interface. Pepper, according to what Tony told, found that the administrative folder did not contain any records, and he found it directly in the hidden disk. Some hidden folders appeared, click on one, and more than a dozen interfaces pop up without delay. It turned out to be the design data map of the Jericho missile. Click the next one, and a dozen designs of steel armor popped up. The style is very different from Tony's. It looks very rough and has 16 districts on it. Pepper never knew there were 16 districts, 16 districts. What do you want to do, Obadir? Click to open the next folder, and it turned out that a video popped up, which looked very blurry. A group of masked men with guns and turbans stood behind a bound figure with a burlap sack on their heads. At the same time, there is another person reading the manuscript in his hand, not speaking English. Said, he tore off the burlap sack on the head of the tied person, revealing the miserable Tony Stark's head. Pepper couldn't believe his eyes, so he quickly typed the word, translation. The picture was directly translated into English simultaneously. You didn't say that the person you killed was the famous Tony Stark. Therefore, Opadri, you have to pay a high price for your lies. Tony Stark's head has gone up. Oh my god. Pepper thought of the truth. It turned out that Tony's accident was planned by Opadri, and he wanted to kill Tony. Without hesitation, I turned off the video and copied all the folders. But just when I clicked the copy button, Opadri's voice came from outside the door. So, what do you think we should do? Obadi was pushing the door and coming in, and Pepper sat down in his seat and asked. Pepper trembled in fright. If Obadir discovered this, he would definitely be killed. The copy progress is still moving slowly Pepper saw Obadiah walking towards the bar, and had the opportunity to force himself to calm down. I know you have troubles, Pepper. Tony, he can always make good things, right? Obadai smelled the wine in his hand and said slowly. Pepper forced himself to laugh. At the same time, he blocked the chip with newspaper while Opadri was pouring the wine, and did not forget to switch the computer back to the screensaver mode. Obadi also walked quickly to Pepper's side, glanced at the computer that was still a screensaver, and he was relieved and sat on the computer desk. Was still shaking the wine glass in his hand, Tony is no longer the same him, right? Pepper looked at the still smiling Obadiah in horror. He lost his soul in that cave. I'm sad. Pepper swallowed, his voice trembling a little, and he said with a smile, he is a bit elusive. He has experienced too many things. I believe he will get better. Obadiah looked at the woman in front of him and exclaimed, you are really a very good woman. Tony doesn't know how lucky he is. Thank you, thank you for your compliment. Pepper got up. Took off the U-disc by holding a newspaper and hurriedly walked to the door. But Obadir also noticed something strange, is that today's newspaper? Would you mind showing it to me? It is good. Pepper left the office, and his steps became more and more hurried. Opadi tossed the newspaper casually, sat back in front of the computer, opened it, and just saw the copied interface, he slapped his head, shit. Single quote. Had a murderous heart, Pepper couldn't keep it, and the news would never leak out. Pepper walked out quickly at a nervous pace, afraid that Obadiah would chase him. Just ran into Agent Coulson, who had been waiting outside Stark Industries these days. Collison saw Pepper and walked up, Miss Potts, we made an appointment. Did you forget? I didn't forget, you can do it now, come with me. Pepper was very glad that Collison was here, and said hurriedly. Now. Yes, right now, come with me. Collison looked at Pepper like this, and instantly understood the situation, came up and walked side by side with Pepper. Go to your office, you will never forget this meeting. Pepper turned his head and glanced at Obadir who was standing on the second floor, and quickly said to Agent Collison. Obadiah looked at the two people who had left, turned around and came to the 16th district, pushing open the door angrily. More than a dozen scientific researchers are still studying in front of the large arc reactor. 
The leading scientific researcher saw Opadri coming and greeted him, Mr. Stan, we have studied it. The task you want us to do seems a little difficult. Difficult. Obadiah frowned and looked at him. Yes, sir, the power supply technology of this iron armor has not yet appeared. Wait a minute, what do you mean by not showing up? William, the technology is here, I just want you to make it smaller. Obadiah hugged William with some excitement, and said, pointing to the reactor. Yes, sir, we tried our best, but to be honest, this can't be done. Obadiah shook him away and shouted angrily, Tony Stark made it in the cave. With a bunch of broken copper and iron. Sorry, I am not Tony Stark. William whispered. Obadi realized that this group of people must have no way to build a reactor to function. Now there is only one way to find Tony Stark, who has complete technology on his chest. Pepper came to Coulson's temporary office and told all the recent things, including the video on the USB flash drive, and the matter of Obadiah as the mastermind. Collison also realized the seriousness of the matter and gave feedback to the above. After all, he is only a level 6 agent now. Five combatants were dispatched to carry out the operation to capture Obadiah and to ensure the safety of Miss Pepper. Knowing Collison's reminder, the flustered Pepper remembered to tell Tony about it. Tony, who was eating in the living room, originally wanted to call Leo together, but thinking of the last time, he did not dare to disturb him. Suddenly heard the phone ringing on the sofa, it turned out that Pepper was calling. Was about to answer, but Tony felt something was wrong, and turned his head to see Obadiah approaching quietly. Obadiah saw that he had been exposed, and he was not worried about anything. He rushed up in two steps, the sound wave in his hand was paralyzed, and even if Tony's combat ability was stronger than Obadiah, he couldn't move. Numerous black blood streaks appeared on the side of his brain, his eyes were bloodshot, his body was stiff, he couldn't make any movements, and he couldn't even put down the phone in his hand. This kind of sonic attack even caused more damage to Tony, who had not rested for a long time. Obadi took off the phone in Tony's hand and slowly supported Tony on the sofa. Breathe, relax, relax. Raise the paralysis device that was still open in his hand, you remember this thing, right? It's a pity that the government didn't approve production. Temporary paralysis is still very useful. Then the switch was closed. Tony's bloodshot eyes are full of disappointment, despair, and his heart is cold. Obadiah pulled Tony's head, Tony, when I ordered you to be killed, I was still worried. Took out a small piece of equipment from the box on the side and fiddled with it, hitting it on the reactor on Tony's chest. I killed the old hen of golden egg, but look. Opadri pressed it lightly, and the reactor bounced hard, causing Tony who was paralyzed to grunt in pain. You should never die. With a spin, he took out the second generation palladium arc reactor from his chest, and only one wire was left connected to the inside. Because you have to lay the last golden egg. Tony looked hard at Obadiah in front of him, but Obadiah smiled grimly, only the bright arc reactor in his eyes. Do you really think the idea in your head is yours? Your father helped build the atomic bomb. If he held on to it like you, what would this world look like? Smiled and looked at Tony's desperate eyes, and pulled out the reactor with a hard pull. Opadi took off the reactor, gestured in front of Tony's eyes, looked at the reactor and exclaimed, oh, it's so beautiful. Tony, this is your destiny symphony. It is really a masterpiece of a master. Look, it will be your legacy. Obadiah leaned on Tony's head and placed the reactor in front of him. It is the core of a new generation of weapons. With these weapons in control, we can control the entire world. Tony is dead. The uncle who has supported him for 15 years, the only relative he trusts and loves most, wants to kill him himself, and Tony doesn't want to see him anymore. I wish you could see the armor prototype I made. I don't want yours, so conservative. It's not good for you to pull Pepper in. I wanted to keep her. Tony's eyes widened, and there was a desire to give up in his heart. Obadi wants to kill Pepper, no, Pepper can't do anything. Single quote. Obadiah left in peace. The time he opened the paralysis device was twice as long as normal, enough to cause harm to the human body. What's more, Tony still needs a reactor in his chest to absorb the iron pieces. If it is not absorbed for too long, the pieces will flow further along the blood. Leo's arms flashed with lightning, and the huge energy in the reactor was being crazily absorbed by Leo, 
matching the two gold titanium alloy plates around him. Countless golden lights poured into the body, and Leo's foot had already crossed over. A powerful force is pouring out from Leo's body little by little. Guided by the golden light from the outside world, the energy begins to gradually converge on Leo's shoulder blades. The gold thread on the body also trembled slightly, and the pattern on the chest gradually spread, extending more small patterns, and even tending to split. The golden light floated on the surface of Leo's body and lifted him into the midair of the room. Just as Leo was wondering, the pain also came out, started from the center of the spine and went deep into the bone marrow. Leo can't think of anything now, only the word, pain. The spine seemed to be pulled out, Leo's muscles were tightly stretched, and even the muscle fibers could be seen clearly. The next moment it was as if a sledgehammer was smashing the vertebrae. His face was red, and he seemed to be bleeding, and his violent eyes could not see a trace of the whites of his eyes. They were soaked with blood, and the teeth rang as if they would shatter in the next moment. The slender fingers also became distorted and distorted. The blue veins bulged all over the arm, and the stiff knuckles of the knuckles had protrusions, like a stone, which broke when they broke. The severe pain from the ribs made Leo want to take it out and throw it away. It seems that there is pain in the hair that can come, and it keeps impacting every corner of Leo's body. At the same time, there is a power to protect Leo's brain, not to let Leo pass out, but it makes his brain boil, as if it will explode in the next second. I don't know that after a long time, Leo's body floating in the air finally began to slowly descend, lying gently on the ground. Tony's numbing effect has not disappeared, but Tony struggled with a pale and bloodless face. He crashed into the elevator half walking and half climbing. His head hit the elevator wall, and he couldn't control his movements. In just a few tens of meters, Tony's clothes were already wet with sweat. I saw the drawer 20 meters away, in which there was a brand new reactor for Leo. That was Tony's hope. Wanted to speed up the pace, but fell down suddenly, but didn't even have the strength to stand up again, and crawled over with a bruised face. Rod received a call from Pepper, what do you mean by hiring someone to kill Tony? Well, where is Tony now? Pepper replied, I don't know. He didn't answer the call. Please go to his house to confirm the situation. Pepper took Colson and five agents to the hidden 16th district, preparing to capture Obadiah. Rod hung up the phone, his expression became tense, and when he stepped on the accelerator, he drove to Tony's house regardless of speeding. Tony struggled to climb to the table, pulled the toolbox on the side stiffly with his hands and feet, and placed it under him, hoping to raise his body. Tried to open the drawer with his last bit of strength, but slipped his finger and did not pull it away. Struggled twice and opened the edge of the drawer, but couldn't get up and take out the reactor. With weak hands and feet, he lay on the ground, his eyes blank. Tony didn't give up, just wanted to accumulate strength one last time. The manipulator on the side of moved, stretched its claws in, gently clipped the bright reactor out, and handed it to Tony. Stark looked at Xiao Dei's manipulator, which he had always disliked before, panting, but Xiao Da moved still because of unknown reasons. Good boy. Obadiah had returned to the 16th area with the reactor at this moment, standing in front of his iron overlord. Connected the glowing reactor in his hand to the retainer in his chest, and smiled at the activated iron overlord. Collison and others also came to the factory area, and Pepper used his ID card to easily enter the gate. Found the gate painted with the words 16 districts, swiping the ID card twice, but did not open it. My card can't open the door. Pepper said anxiously. Collison stopped, took out a round table device not much bigger than a button from his pocket, and stuck it to the door lock. You better take a few steps back. Colson said calmly. Pepper quickly hid behind, with his back to the door. There was a slight explosion, special penetrating explosive force, and the lock of the door was instantly blown up. The opadri inside also heard the movement at the door, his eyes twitched, and the program was imported, ready to go forward and put on. Rod has come to Tony's house, he has the permission to enter and exit, and shouted, Tony. Tony. The first idea was to go to the underground studio, this is where Tony stays the longest. Saw the figure lying motionless at the table, stepped forward and hurried up to wake up Tony, who was already wearing the reactor. Tony, whose face was still extremely pale, grabbed Rod, and the first sentence he asked. 
Where is Pepper? She's okay. There are five agents with her. They are going to arrest Obadiah. Tony calmly recalled what Obadi had said before him, and said angrily. Five people are definitely not enough. Pulled Rod to stand up hard, came to the experiment board, and put on Mark III directly. After only three minutes, the Mark III has been completely put on. The cool red gold appearance and the full sense of technology can be said to directly hit the man's longing. This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Rod exclaimed enviously, forgetting Tony's tragic situation just now. Let us go. Tony just wanted to hurry to Pepper's side, kick the sports car away, and stand under the big hole that he smashed through last time. Do you want me to do something? The mask was buttoned down, and a metallic voice came out. Clear the sky, then wake up the guy in the second floor room, let him come as soon as possible. After finished speaking, strong flames spurted from his hands and feet, rising into the sky. Rod saw Tony's handsome departure, and said in awe and envious. Turned his head and saw a pure silver Mark II, with no facilities in his chest. Looking at this suit, he swallowed. I'll pass you through next time, baby. Turned around and walked upstairs, still wondering, is there anyone else in Tony's house? Single quote. Opened a few rooms, all empty, and then opened a door. Saw Leo, who was bare to the top, was in a coma next to the bed. There were broken metal blocks all around, and the faint moonlight came in and looked terrifying. This is the kid from last time. Did Tony mean him? Rod was also a little uncertain. Stepped forward and helped Leo up, looking at Leo who was still not awake. Hearing his heartbeat, it was strong and powerful. Breathe. There is no problem. Rod was surprised, and slapped Leo on the thigh. Snapped. Single quote. Rod's brows clenched, and his right hand trembled a little, it's so hard, is it a rock? Single quote. Leo finally felt a movement, and his eyes moved. Opened fiercely, and the black pupils instantly enlarged a bit. Leo trembled all over, only to realize that everything was over. The whole man relaxed, lying freely on the ground, looking at the pattern on the ceiling with his eyes blankly, a little demented. Rod looked at the child in front of him, as if stupid. Slowed down for a while, then slowly got up, this is really painful. Leo raised his head and shouted loudly. Tony asked me to go up to the second floor to find someone. It should be you. He wants you to get to Stark Industries as soon as possible. Rod looked at the somewhat silly boy uncertainly. Leo finally reacted, what happened to Mr. Stark? Obadi wants to kill Tony, now Pepper has taken the agents to catch Obadi, and Tony has. What, is it tonight? Leo's eyes widened, put on a t-shirt casually and hurried out, of course, he did not forget to take the headphones by the bed. Rod also followed, let's go, I will drive you over quickly, although I don't know what you are good for. Leo glanced at Rod strangely, Colonel Rod, I think I should be faster than you. Two steps quickly, walked out of the gate, a layer of golden light gushing out of his body, rising up into the sky, turning into a golden light, and disappearing into the night sky. Rod chased him out, and he rubbed his eyes when he saw Leo going to the sky just now, thinking he was wrong. Looked up at the sky, only to see the distant golden light spot, until it disappeared. F.A., what happened? Collison and several people have already arrived inside the 16th district. All six of them took out their pistols and watched them, but they did not see any figures. Went all the way to the deepest point and saw Mark I brought back from the desert, Coulson said. It seems that you are right. He also made a suit of armor. I think it should be bigger. Pepper noticed that it was different from the drawing, and turned around and saw two cables still emitting sparks. Several agents did not relax their vigilance and started to patrol everywhere. Pepper also walked aside and took a look, only to find a different movement behind a row of chains. Curiously wanted to look inside, a pair of white mechanical eye sockets suddenly appeared from the dark back. S eyes rose rapidly, and at the same time there was a heavy mechanical transmission sound, and a white light glowed on his chest. Pepper screamed and hurried away. Tai Bawang, who was two meters high, chased it out with strides. Leo galloped in the air, but the mask that wrapped him changed greatly. The original silk threads stretched out many small gold threads. The original mesh holes were filled with illusory gold traces, some of which obstructed Leo's vision, and naturally opened the golden eyes. 
Leo's mind still had the impression of despair and pain, and it would shudder in retrospect. But at the same time, he looked at his panel expectantly, wanting to see what happened. Control point. 101 feet. Strength 20 defense 20 speed 20 spirit 20 inches. Skill. C level metal control, B level body, and C level micro control. Strengthening. Golden eye, 100%, copper skin, 100%, steel bar, 100%, iron bone, 3%. Derivative technique, destroying golden eyes don't be fooled by any abilities, see through all illusions, enhance visual observation, metalize objects. Don't move the golden body, enhance great defense power, stand on the ground with both feet, you will have infinite physical strength, the body will recover faster, and will not be moved by external force. Nirvana Golden Wings The highest speed can be blessed to 10 times the speed of sound. The gold wings are condensed into weapons, special skills smiley face. Leo's brow furrowed, his physical attributes all rose to 20, which was understandable. I also clearly felt that my physical fitness had increased a lot, and it should have reached the limit of the human body, far exceeding the 19-point attribute. But with this new ability, why can't I see the final special skill? Also, Nirvana Golden Wing. Leo looked at the golden light surrounding him, hovering in the sky, closing his eyes and feeling this special power. Most of the gold thread directly in front of it seemed to split, and it flickered and separated from the overlapping state. Part of the golden light gathered behind him, and the one in front of him was also fully expanded. Leo, who had been wrapped in a golden egg shape, spread out the huge wings that had wrapped him. Two golden wings with a length of two meters, connected to the shoulder blades, gently waving. There is no feather-like thing on the wings. Instead, layers of diamonds with strange patterns are superimposed to form the whole shape, but at the same time illusory and unreal, like wings in a dream. Still in an unobstructed state, Leo shook his wings slightly, then disappeared in place, easily breaking through the speed of sound, and flying silently. The three agents guarding Pepper quickly raised their guns and aimed at the head of Iron Overlord, and fired directly. But everything was in vain. A huge palm slapped a person directly into a meatloaf, and he waved his arm away. Ordinary humans have no resistance. Obadai chased Pepper, but his huge figure was blocked by a small door. After hitting it twice, he smashed the wall, but Pepper was nowhere to be seen. Tony, who has been flying at the limit, is not far from Stark Industries, and he does not have to worry about the lack of energy in the new reactor. Tony dialed Pepper's number on Mark III, Pepper. Tony, are you okay with Tony? I'm fine. Obadi, he is crazy. Pepper had rushed to the gate and hurriedly explained the situation to Tony. Listen, you run away. Tony confessed. He also made a suit of armor. The ground behind Pepper appeared to be cracked, raised, and broken. Obadiah directly broke through the soil and rushed out of the ground. Iron Overlord, which evolved from the Mark I wreck and design ideas, is also a military-grade alloy material. The shape is rough, the armor is thick, and a comprehensive information management system is added. But because of technical problems, it cannot be done. The operation mode can only be changed from limb plus nerve synchronization to direct joystick control. However, there are a large number of external exposed hydraulic rods, air pumps and rotary design on the appearance of the Iron Bachelor, making the Iron Bachelor's power far beyond the current Mark III. The giant Iron Overlord saw Pepper who was calling, where do you think you can escape? You are useless anymore. Raised a six-barrel Gatling cannon attached to the right arm of the machine and pointed it at the panicked Pepper, and the barrel began to rotate. Tony's roar came from the sky. Stan. A steel figure appeared in the sky and rushed towards Obadiah. The next moment, Obadir aimed his gun at Tony. Before he fired a few shots, he was directly hugged by Mark III. He flew out and broke through two walls. The two figures rolled into the traffic. Iron Bawang took the lead to stand up, and a car full of children was suddenly stopped in front of him. He directly picked it up and turned to face Tony. Obadiah shouted excitedly, I like this armor. Let them down. They deserve to be unlucky, Tony. Iron Bawang took the car and walked forward two steps. Because of the hostages, Tony stopped the palm pulse cannon he was about to use, and concentrated energy to his chest. His chest was even brighter, and he shot out an arm-thin energy beam, knocking back the huge iron overlord. 
The car also fell down suddenly, and Tony carried it. The tight-fitting design of Mark III did not allow him to easily lift a car full of people like the Iron Overlord. Energy consumption increased. Tony knelt down on one knee and put the car down as smoothly as possible but the mother of the child who was driving was already frightened and stepped on the accelerator frantically. The car with the rear wheel on the ground directly pushed Tony out, and even pulled the Mark III to the bottom of the car, rubbing it against the ground violently. Tony was pressed to the bottom of the car and flew more than 10 meters away. With a push of his arm, he lifted the rear wheel of the car and let it go to the rear. Then he got rid of the embarrassment. Iron Bawang had already rushed over, and dragged a motorcycle with his hand, like waving an iron rod, and smashed Tony away. The whole road was in chaos. I don't know how many accidents occurred. Vehicles several hundred meters around stopped, and people got out and ran away screaming. The Iron Overlord directly lifted the Mark III lying on the ground. The Mark III was a big toy in front of the huge Iron Overlord. For 30 years, I have been supporting you. Smashed Tony down, stepped on the huge iron foot, I built the company from scratch. Never try to get in my way. Squeezed Mark III's neck with one hand and smashed it into the bus beside him. Especially you. A medium-sized missile protruded from the left carapace, semi-automatic laser guidance, aimed at the wreckage of the car, and launched it. The missile that came out of the hatch did not hit the car, but flew straight into the sky and exploded. A golden light appeared in front of the Iron Overlord, and the golden light slowly dissipated. Leo is here. The small right hand pushed against the huge Iron Overlord through the air. The Iron Overlord was knocked out by an irresistible force, and flew back thousands of meters away. Mr. Stark, how are you doing? Mark III flew from the wreckage of the bus and floated in midair. Leo, take Pepper to a safe place first, I'll stop him. Leo did shoot a ton of Iron Overlord to a kilometer away with a single palm, but before it landed, huge fireworks spread out from under the Iron Overlord feet, flying it to support. Tibawang's left arm was mounted on a seven-unit missile launching nest, which aimed at two people in the distance, and all seven missiles were launched. Seven small missiles with fireworks flew over. The shoulder cannon of the Mark III also rose, and 14 rounds were fired out, detonating all the missiles on the way. Mark III also immediately dived over, far faster than the slow-flying Iron Overlord. Leo turned and flew to Pepper's side, Sister Pepper, I will take you out of here first. Pepper was only slightly surprised at Leo who flew over, and looked anxiously at the two figures in the sky in the distance, very worried. Leo's eyes flashed, as if two people a few hundred meters away were in front of him. Sister Pepper, don't worry, although Obadiah's armor is much stronger than Mr. Stark, but the flexibility is far different. Iron Bawang does have the ability to fly, but the propulsion ports are only set on the soles of the feet and the gas injection ports extending from the outside of the feet. In addition, the Iron Bawang is more unfavorable for flying than the Mark III. It can be said that it is completely dependent on the thrust provided by powerful energy, and because there is no other device to control the attitude. Therefore, the space rocket lifts up vertically in the climb phase, and it is difficult to complete other maneuvering flight actions. If it weren't for Tony's lack of power and he was afraid that he would not be able to rise to a sufficient height and flew straight up, Obadiah would not be able to catch Mark III in the air. But now with Tony's full battery, the only weapon left by Iron Overlord is the six-barrel Gatling cannon on his right arm. Sure enough, within a few clicks, Mark III kicked the Iron Overlord down and smashed a big hole in the ground. I have to say that although there are problems with the design direction of the Iron Overlord, it is undeniable that the hard protection ability is really strong compared with the Mark III, and in terms of firepower, it also exceeds the current Mark III. Even if he was kicked down from a high altitude, he still rushed out with nothing, and continued to grab Tony. The current situation is that Iron Overlord is an infinitely powerful and defensive High Hercules, while Mark III is more like a flexible assassin, waiting for a one-shot kill. Once caught, it may be cold. Iron Overlord also has many shortcomings. Multiple electronic components are exposed, unable to fly freely, and does not have the ability to resist icing at high altitude. Tony in the dead state only grabbed the last point. But the fully charged Tony can use the first two shortcomings to kill him. Obadiah didn't expect it, he only knew that Tony's pulse cannon could not break his defense. 
Iron Overlord is still shooting Mark III with the six-barrel Gatling cannon. I have never liked this kind of thing, but I have to say, I like this armor very much. Tony fired a pulse cannon to knock him back a few meters, but it did not cause substantial damage, and the Iron Overlord continued to rush towards Tony. Concentrate energy and aim at those exposed hydraulic rods. Tony said to Jarvis, a large amount of energy was gathered on his chest again, and a beam of pulse cannon hit the connection part of Iron Overlord right arm and body, destroying the exposed parts. Lost control of his right arm and dropped. A fierce flame burst out from behind Mark III, and instantly sprinted in front of the Iron Overlord, hitting his left arm joint with a full blow. Although it hit, Iron Overlord left hand still grabbed Tony's calf and squeezed it with all his strength. Tony quickly turned around and shot him out with a shot on his chest, knocking him into the air, in Mark III's calf, the metal armor had been deformed, almost hurting Tony inside. Opadri activated the flying jet device with all his strength, and wanted to leave here as soon as possible. Thick black smoke was ejected under his feet, like a few smoke bombs. Tony raised his right hand and raised a small anti-armor missile. Although it had a range of no more than 200 meters, it was enough to hit the Iron Overlord who had just started. In less than three seconds, a violent explosion came from the steel armor that had just flew less than 100 meters, even if the Iron Overlord external hard defense measures were strong, it could not stop the missile that was enough to blow up the tank. The huge armor was torn apart and scattered all over the ground, and the Obadiah in it was no longer visible. Seeing this scene, Leo rushed over, Mark III stood still, watching the wreckage all over the floor motionless. Leo reached out and pulled all the steel wrecks over, including the parts that had flown dozens of meters away. Many of the parts showed signs of scorching, but there were also many parts that were still intact. The super high quality metal was placed in front of Leo. Stark opened his mask, his eyes a little complicated, and he looked at the little guy in front of him. Leo, thank you. Mr. Stark, you defeated Opadri yourself. Anyway, thank you. Where is Pepper? Tony is still thinking about Pepper's safety there, at a distance of about one kilometer, Agent Coulson is also there, he doesn't know yet. I am coming. Leo pointed in a direction. Clang. Mark number three mask closed, and took a look at the tragic surroundings. Although Stark Industries is still some distance away from the city, there are still many car accidents caused by the fighting. I will establish, the Stark Foundation, which will be responsible for all the responsibilities of this accident and compensate the injured families. Tony looked at the flaming environment and said, and didn't know if it was for Leo or himself. After Tony left, Leo looked at the fragment of Iron Overlord before him. Reached out and manipulated it, and with a grip of his right hand, it quickly turned into a metal ball. The previous self, Facing metal materials such as gold titanium alloys, can be manipulated and deformed, but the speed is slow, not like ordinary metals, and can be handled at will. Broke through the limit of 99 points, and the control of metal has been greatly improved. Now facing the material that is not inferior to gold and titanium alloy, it can already be easily controlled. The golden wings of Nirvana behind stretched out from the body, unfolded, the two wings easily inserted into the metal ball in front of them, and a strange energy poured out from it. Melted into the gold wing, and saw the pattern in it gradually solidified, and the metal ball gradually squashed. Within three minutes, the huge metal ball is one-tenth smaller and the color is gray. With a single tap, it became fragments all over the floor, and I couldn't see any original shape. Leo turned slightly to one side, and the right wing lightly scratched the reinforced concrete wall on the side, and an obvious scratch appeared on the wall. Leo turned around and left, shaking his shoulders, Jin Wing took it back and disappeared. Mark III fell in front of Pepper, the mask opened. Tony looked at Pepper and laughed. Tony. God, how are you? Pepper saw countless scratches on Mark III's body, as well as many bullet holes. Yes, Pepper, I'm fine. Tony replied looking at Pepper. Pepper stepped forward and looked up at Tony in the armor. He could still see the black bloodstain on Tony's brain that had not completely disappeared. A little excited wanted to hug it, but suppressed it, and looked at Tony in tears. How much Tony wants to take off this armor at this time, but the current design can only take off the palm and head, and the other parts can't be taken off by himself, only with the help of a robotic arm. Agent Coulson stood over, 
Mr. Stark, there are still a lot of troubles to solve tonight, I hope you can cooperate. Tony looked at Collison, and knew that he was protecting Pepper out, and brought a few agents to help, and he didn't treat him coldly. Pepper, set up a Stark Foundation, I think I should be responsible for this. Collison continued with a smile and said, Mr. Stark, we will have a dedicated person to clean up this situation. A press conference will definitely be held tomorrow. I hope Mr. Stark will deliver a speech according to our words. Pepper stepped forward and said, Okay, thank you, I believe you, if there is a need, I think Stark Industries is willing to contribute. Collison smiled and walked to the side, reported the situation to his head, and sent someone to maintain the situation as soon as possible. Leo also came over, sorry, Mr. Stark, I didn't expect it to be so long since I practiced. Leo, you have already reminded me, but I didn't believe you. I didn't expect Opadri to kill me, but it was a surprise. Tony thought of those times when he was desperate, it was also a happy thing to be able to survive smoothly. Then what's next? Mark III closed his mask, I'm going to clean up some cars that are obstructing the road. Leo looked at Pepper, Sister Pepper, have you eaten dinner? After an hour, Tony flew back in armor, Pepper and Leo standing in front of the huge arc reactor. Mr. Stark, how is the situation outside? Leo asked. It's basically all right, but many people were injured. One of the motorcycle riders was seriously injured and was sent to the hospital for rescue. Tony took off Mark III's helmet directly, Leo, help me remove Mark III, I don't want to go back and unload it. Leo stretched out his hand to mark the number 3, but within a few seconds, the armor was completely disintegrated. And Tony also stood up, did not take two steps, his feet softened and fell down. Pepper held Stark's body, what happened to Tony? Looking at the sweaty vest on Tony, the big hole in the chest of the suit that Opadri had forcibly removed from the reactor. Mr. Stark needs a rest. The sequelae of the sonic paralysis device is not that simple. Leo's golden eyes swept over and said. In the end, Pepper sent Tony to the hospital for a good examination. At 10 o'clock the next morning, Stark Industries, dozens of different media reporters all gathered here, looking forward to the truth that happened last night. This press conference is also being broadcast live on TV, and Rhodes is speaking on stage. The official statement regarding the Stark Industrial Incident last night has been delivered to you. Witnesses claimed that it was a robot malfunction that caused the accident. Fortunately, one of Tony Stark's personal bodyguards. Leo looked at the two people in front of him. Pepper was putting foundation on Tony and finishing up his makeup. Tony was sitting in a chair looking at the New York Times today. The front page news on the front page was, who is Iron Man? Single quote. Iron Man. This name is catchy, I like it very much, but strictly speaking it is not accurate enough. It is made of gold titanium alloy. But no matter what, the name is quite vivid. Tony looked at the newspaper report about Iron Man with some joy. Collison came over and handed a few small blue notes, this is the manuscript you want to say. Okay. Tony took it hesitantly. When you were on the yacht, we made a customs document, saying that you were on Avalon Island last night, and there were 50 witnesses' testimony. Tony looked at the manuscript in his hand, I thought I would say that there are only two of us, Pepper and I, and we will stay on that island. Pepper tore off the adhesive tape at the corner of Tony's eye, but Tony looked at Pepper jokingly. Collison still looked at the two with a smile on his face, just read each word. Tony glanced at him and frowned, why is Stan not explained here? We have taken care of it. He was on vacation. Anyway, the accident rate of small passenger planes has been quite high. But if the robot is my bodyguard. I mean, this is a bit fake, don't you think? Tony looked at Coulson reluctantly. It's not the first time I have dealt with this kind of thing, Mr. Stark, you just have to read the statement and the matter will soon subside. Coulson said to him professionally, you have one and a half minutes left. Preparation time. Agent Coulson. Pepper walked over and called him, I want to express my sincere thanks for everything you have done. It's just my job, let's contact me in the future. Collison, who has always been smiling, is really easy to give others a good impression. You call National Strategy. Just call SHIELD. Bureau. Collison was about to leave, but he didn't forget to look back at Leo, the kid who had always been next to the target. 
Pepper smiled relaxedly, get ready to go on stage. Iron Man is actually quite good too, I haven't come up with such a good name myself. Tony walked over and put on the suit jacket in Pepper's hands. You are not Iron Man. I am. You are not. Forget it, whatever. Tony couldn't compete with Pepper. But when the buttons were buttoned, Tony couldn't help but said, if I were Iron Man, the girlfriend who knew my true identity would definitely be very entangled, because she worried all day that I would die and was proud of me. Quote. Turned to face Pepper, but this kind of fierce psychological struggle will only make her love me even more, tell me what you thought about your night. At the end, the topic turned and said. Which night? You know. Pepper, who was finishing his suit, looked up at Tony. Did you say that we danced, and then ran to the roof balcony, and later, you went downstairs to get me a drink, but you left me there alone, and then asked Leo to accompany me back that time. Pepper looked at Tony jokingly, you mean that night, right? Tony looked back at Leo in surprise, Leo smiled and gave Mimi two thumbs up. Tony coughed a little awkwardly, and was about to go out to give a speech. Leo and Pepper are standing in the room, watching TV. Tony is reading the manuscript on stage. Sister Pepper, I am going home tomorrow, and school will start soon. Aunt Jenny should talk about me. Leo, tomorrow, in such a hurry, doesn't Tony still need your help? Pepper asked strangely. No, Mr. Stark has never needed help from others. He just needs someone to accompany him, not just cold metal, and my goal has been achieved. Mr. Stark has given me a lot of help. Leo shook his palm, and felt the power. But suddenly there was a different voice on the TV. Is still Christine, the familiar female reporter, sorry, Mr. Stark, you really thought we would believe that it was one of your personal bodyguards who happened to appear in armor, in fact. I know what you mean, Tony interrupted her to continue. It's okay to question the official statement. But I can't speculate or say insinuatingly that I am a superhero. I never said you were a superhero. Christine retorted immediately. Didn't you say it? Tony was taken aback, that's great, otherwise there will be some heavenly night pools. But after finishing this sentence, Tony felt a little uncomfortable from the bottom of his heart, not because of the reporter's sentence, but because of his own heart. Tony said suddenly in a daze. Obviously, I am not a hero. I have a lot of personality defects and made many mistakes. Most of you also know. Read according to the script. Rod reminded. Seeing this, Leo unconsciously took a step forward. Tony raised the manuscript in his hand and looked at the content above, actually the truth is. Tony stopped, and many pictures appeared in his mind. Ethan finally said, cherish life, don't let it go. Single quote. The reporter said, many people say that you are making a fortune in your country. Single quote. Terrorists use their weapons to kill civilians indiscriminately on TV. Tony understands his responsibilities in his heart, he will maintain world peace with a new identity. I am Iron Man. All the media people in front of him went crazy, all stood up, moved forward, countless flashes hit Tony's face. All the people who were paying attention to this matter were also shocked, and did not expect this answer. Including Peter Parker, who was eight years old watching TV at home. He was deeply impressed by seeing the big, determined face on TV. Leo looked at this handsome face on TV. He started an era by himself. Pepper had anger on her face, which was a scene she didn't want to see. She doesn't want Tony to wear a steel suit to take risks. In her eyes, Tony's safety is more important. Looked at Leo on the side, and said angrily, Leo, do you know this? I know a lot. Leo stepped back again and glanced at Sister Pepper, as if he saw the shadow of Little Morgan. Pepper was very angry and helpless, and hurried out to help Tony out. Leo lay down on the sofa. Break through this level, and the energy consumption is much smaller. It seems that a single reactor can last a few days. If there is no accident, the next period of time should be relatively calm. Single quote. Seeing the warm sunlight outside the floor-to-ceiling window shining on him, Leo narrowed his eyes comfortably. Well, I want to eat cheeseburger. Single quote. At the same moment, in a dilapidated house in Russia, an elderly man who was dyingly ill also saw this scene through the small antenna TV with a little messy screen. Tony Stark stood on the stage, wrapped in a flashlight into a unique superstar. Ivan. Weak. He called the name feebly. Ivan. Cough. Cough. 
Outside the dimly lit room, a strong man with long hair turned his head, listening to the weak voice, his eyes flashed unbearably, and he came to the bed. The old man still stared at the TV, coughed several times, and said weakly in Russian, that should be you. Don't listen to their nonsense. The strong man replied softly, putting a medicine in the old man's mouth. Sorry, I can only give you my knowledge, cough, cough. Ivan gently rubbed the old man's chest with his hands, hoping to relieve his pain. But within a few seconds, the old man with his eyes closed never woke up again. Ivan took a sip of vodka into his mouth, trying to calmly face this expected event. But after a sip of strong alcohol, he couldn't help crying out in grief. Glanced at Tony Stark on TV, his eyes full of killing intent. After digging through the boxes and cabinets, he found out a piece of artwork. A reactor-like figure was drawn on it, and he nailed it to the wall. On the lower right corner of the blue graphic is impressively written, Stark Industries. Single quote. At night, Pepper got busy again because of a word from Tony. Leo followed Tony back to the beach house. Tony's body was checked by the hospital and it was okay. Jarvis. Welcome home, sir. Before Tony could turn on the light, he saw a strange figure standing by the window, facing the sea. I am Iron Man. Tony hadn't spoken yet, but from the strange figure came something that Tony had said this morning. Do you think you are the only superhero in the world? The man turned around. Mr. Stark, there are many people like you, but you don't know it yet. Who are you? Tony stretched out his hand vigilantly, trying to protect Leo behind him, but he didn't know when Leo was gone. A bald black man walked out of the darkness with a black lining and a long black trench coat, and a black eye patch on his left eye. Nick Fury, director of S.H.I.E.L.D. Nick Fury only saw Tony alone, his eyes flashed with surprise, but he continued to stare at Tony and said. I want to talk to you about the establishment of the Avengers. Leo stood outside the gate, eyes shining with golden light, looking at Nick Fury inside, his expression a little wary. Flew directly to the second floor and entered his room. Looked at the two people and spoke straightforwardly, but even if they had hearing beyond ordinary people, they couldn't hear their conversation. I'm going to learn lip language after seeing it. Single quote. Leo knew that Nick Fury had come to Tony to form the Avengers, and Tony resolutely rejected him. Nick Fury didn't stay long, because Tony now thinks he can rely on himself instead of joining the team. Nick Fury also left calmly, seemingly strategizing about everything. Leo also came down from the second floor, Mr. Stark, what did you talk about? Tony is no fuss. He has been cooperating with the military and he doesn't know how many agents and leaders he has met. Tony doesn't wait to see them. Where did you go? Just now, the person said that it was the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. and wanted me to join a team of superheroes, incredible. But Tony brought a tablet and banged on it, Jarvis. I'm at your service anytime, sir. How did Nick Fury get in? I don't know, sir, the surveillance is blocked, and I have not observed the arrival of other people. Jarvis replied honestly. Leo, do you know about the shield? Shield. They are still capable of shielding Jarvis in a small area. It seems I want to upgrade Jarvis again up. Tony looked at the lines of code on the tablet without lifting his head, trying to find the loophole. Leo also sat down, S.H.I.E.L.D. is the agency where Agent Coulson is located. It was originally called the National Land Strategic Defense Attack and Logistics Support Bureau. After World War II, it was created by your father Howard Stark and Agent Carter. Action Agency. Tony heard the familiar name and put down the tablet in his hand. It was created by my father. Why didn't I hear it? Well, he never paid attention to me and would not tell me anything. Tony was very resistant to talking about his parents. Although he didn't say anything, he still couldn't accept the incident in 1991. Leo looked at Tony in front of him, Mr. Stark, I am leaving tomorrow, I think I should go home too. Tomorrow. Why, I already have ideas for Mark IV, don't you want to see it? Tony tried to use Leo's original love for the armor to keep him. After all, for this, the little friend who has been with him for more than a month is still a little bit reluctant. Leo looked at Tony in front of him and laughed. Mr. Stark, I have to go to school, or Aunt Jenny will scold me, and Mr. Stark, you will be busy next time, I will see you again when I have time. Tony glanced at Leo and showed a long-lost smile, 
do you need a special plane to take you back? No, book a plane ticket for me. I think Aunt Jenny and the others will come and pick me up, but Mr. Stark, can I bring a reactor back? I will never reveal it, I promise. Quote. Stark was stunned for a moment, looking at the small reactor that caused the Iron Overlord battle, if it leaks out, how much war will it cause? But considering Leo's ability, there should be no problem guarding the arc reactor, okay, but it must be destroyed immediately after use. Sure, Mr. Stark, can you still give me a few tons of metal? Leo was a little embarrassed, but he really didn't have the money to buy it. Tony also responded at night, Pepper also came back and went to the underground studio. Leo just returned to his room to continue his practice. Pepper stood beside Tony, Leo is leaving. Yes, tomorrow's plane. Tony, Leo has special abilities, but it seems to use you a bit, I mean. I know, but I am very happy. I have the ability to help him, am I not? And this is not a use, just an equivalent exchange, Leo, very powerful, Pepper, he is more powerful than you think. Tony looked at Pepper said. To talk about Leo's abilities, only Tony who has been in contact with him the most knows part of it. The next day, Happy sent Leo to the airport and arranged for the first class cabin of the passenger plane. The other things will be delivered home by Stark Industries. Tony also put on his armor at home, Jarvis, search for the nearest war zone, let's go there. Leo got into the first class of the plane and looked at a seat far more comfortable than economy class. With so many seats, there are only two people. Well, it's nice to have money. Leo can see a person sitting in front of him reading the newspaper, but he is not ready to meet strangers. Walked forward and sat down in his seat. The seat was on the right side of the man, with only one aisle in between. Took a glance, the first page of the newspaper was a photo of Tony Stark. It is estimated that today's news is all about Iron Man. Tony Stark is Iron Man, this news headline is boring. The man put down the newspaper in his hand and revealed a familiar face. Well, let's talk about some interesting things. The newspaper fell, and a asterisk 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 bald head appeared in front of Leo, the iconic blindfold. Nick Fury, director of S.H.I.E.L.D. Leo raised his brows and was a little surprised, director Fury, I didn't expect you to find me here. You are mysterious, really, but I just have curiosity. The more mysterious the person, the more I like to find out. It took me a while to find your news, Leo. Nick Fury leaned back in his chair and relaxed. Leo looked around and found that on the plane that had taken off, apart from the two pilots, only Leo and Fury were left. All the passengers who were in the economy class have disappeared, and the plane has already flown to an altitude of 4 kilometers. In other words, in the few minutes between Leo passing by the economy class and taking off, more than 100 people quietly evacuated. Nick Fury looked at Leo, whose eyes were slightly glowing with golden light, and there was a surprise in his eyes. It has been a long time since he saw the second superpower. Leo was found completely because of Collison's report. Many people on the scene have seen a golden light appear, suspecting someone with superpowers. Leo, 11 years old, has no biological parents background. He appeared in New York six years ago and was adopted by Jenny Jones and George Davis. Now he will be studying at Tree City Middle School. His grades are very good. First three years old. Nick looked at Leo and kept talking about his information, as if he wanted to see something. But Leo's eyes became calmer, lying relaxed on the seat. Nick Fury, a 10th level agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., once a member of the Roaring Commando, a genetically modified fighter of the SSS project, do you think, is the Orange Cat fun? Every time Leo said a word, Fury's one-eyed eyes became more suspicious and vigilant. The degree of confidentiality of his identity information is the highest in the world, and only two people have the authority to read it. But the little guy in front of him said so much. Finally, Director Fury stood up and looked at Leo with deep eyes. Your ability is very strange, you can see people's past, I think you used this to get close to Stark. Leo also had some broken jars. Although Jarvis had already asked Jarvis to delete his data in advance, Fairy had already dug up these bright estimates. Director Fury, don't you know? Leo smiled, you came to me first, what do you want to do? But Nick sat down relaxedly, unexpectedly, I found such a person. 
I checked all the Asian couples who were born in the United States and the babies who entered the country. They didn't have your information. It was like a fake. It comes out the same. And you have stayed with our key observation object, Tony Stark. So, I just wanted to ask about your situation, but I didn't expect that you are also a superpower. Fry's surprise for Leo is getting bigger and bigger. Why do you think I will join the Avengers? Leo asked curiously. You even know this, do you want to know the meaning of the Avengers? Nick looked at Leo. The Avengers, Danvers. Leo looked at the black man in front of him, thinking that when he was young, he was also a stupid and cute character. Nick Fury's heart was full of shocking waves, this was just a thought of his own at the time. And Leo knows all this, and even more, he may also know the news of Captain Danvers. Leo opened his golden eyes and looked at Fury. He really saw the beeper that Captain Marvel gave him in his arms, but he didn't expect Nick to carry it with him. Nick Fury also saw Leo's eyes, staring at the pager on his chest, as if he could see through it. This is Nick Fury's last whole card, originally only he knew it, but now a second person has emerged. Fury even had a murderous heart at this moment, but he felt that Leo was useful. Then do you know that I am still a martial arts master? Leo also seemed to see Fury's thoughts, Director Fury, I'm just a child. I'm only in the first year of junior high. You don't want to do anything to me. I think it is necessary to talk to Jenny, you should be able to graduate early. Mr. Leo, are you interested in joining S.H.I.E.L.D.? Fury still let go of his murderous intentions, but in his heart, he has mentioned Leo's security level to that of the Hulk. Snake. S.H.I.E.L.D. No, Chief Fury, how many people know about you coming to me? I checked all your information, what's wrong? Actually, I didn't think I would contact you so early, but can I delete my information? Of course, I can also tell you three news that you want to know and I also know. Leo looked at Fury with some expectation, Jenny and George were his bottom line, and he didn't want the bottom line bad guys to spread to them. Fury's eyes flashed, and he touched his chin. It seems that there is a problem in our shield, isn't it? Leo thought about the shield. Bureau, which had basically been eaten by Hydra and would be dissolved in a few years, and felt a little distressed for Director Fury. Okay, I promise you. What are your abilities? Nick Fury said suddenly. I'm fooling, you're so pitiful. Leo never thought that he was so shameless that he would ask this. I don't know, I haven't finished the development yet, but now I can see important moments for some people, and I can still fly. Leo thought for a while and said. These news have actually been guessed by Fury a long time ago, and used this to test the bottom line of Leo's answer, which has already touched the bottom line. Who do you think will be in the Avengers? Leo looked at Fury speechlessly. Now Fury has always been in a trial mode. He hasn't really believed Leo's words, and he is skeptical of Leo's answer. Is also testing his abilities now. Uncertain, I don't know what your decision will change in the future, but what I know is Captain America and Iron Man. Leo was a little angry and wanted to see Fury's last question Nick Fury's mind turned, I keep the last question, Leo, would you like to be an advisor to the Avengers? The Avengers gather the most outstanding people in the world to form an emergency team. When encountering a global emergency crisis, the Avengers are sent to defend the Earth. It is not an organization under S.H.I.E.L.D., how about it? I think about it, I hope you can fulfill your promise. Leo ignored Nick Fury, and recalled the plot of the previous life in his mind. Until the plane stopped at the airport, Nick Fury looked at Leo's leaving back and gently pressed the headset, increase the search for Captain America, and monitor Tony Stark's movements at any time. Leo walked out the gate of the airport, and Fury took a final look. Did not say anything about Leo, and will even delete Leo's information as quickly as possible. Leo, this kid who couldn't see through, became another whole card of Nick Fury. Aunt Jenny and Uncle George Yulio, who were waiting outside the airport early, hugged each other. Uncle George said, Leo, have you grown taller? Aunt Jenny also looked at Leo in amazement, without complaining that Leo had not come back. Yes, Leo, you have grown taller, you have to have it, 1 meter 3 to 5. Leo looked at the two people who cared about him happily, well, I have eaten a lot of good things recently, of course I have grown taller, hee <laughs> hee. Since he was full, the fullness of his stomach allowed Leo to grow from a dwarf to the height of a normal child. 
Let's go, let's go home, I have brought you several gifts. Leo handed all the small gifts he brought back to Aunt Jenny and Uncle George. On the same day, I also came to Peter's house and gave him a lot of toys, as well as his own Iron Man model, which made seven-year-old Peter Parker really not like it. In the evening, Aunt Jenny had been teaching Leo, she had promised to come back once a month, but she didn't come back more than a month, so she was angry. Uncle George was also happy to see this scene, sitting on the sofa watching the ball game, holding a piece of pizza in his hand, and Jenny beating Leo on the side, Leo was always laughing, and the atmosphere was very lively. The next day, Stark Industries Express delivery came to the door, and several tons of metal no less than gold and titanium alloys were put into the garage workshop. At the same time, Harpy, who was following, also brought a small box to Leo's hand. Leo, what Tony asked me to give you personally seems to be very important. Would you like to open it and take a look? The chubby happy looked at the suitcase he took all the way, and he was also curious. In the garage, Leo pressed the switches on both ends of the box, and the surface of the box flicked slightly, and a square metal block appeared in it. Harpy became puzzled, does Tony tell me to bring you a piece of metal? Leo, with his faintly shining eyes, saw the reactor in it through the three centimeter thick metal wall. The strange thing was that the reactor was not connected to the metal, and the distance between the reactor was about one millimeter. And this sealed metal block, the way to open it, seems to have no other way other than breaking it open violently. Happy stood aside and looked at Leo, covering his palms, and with a light touch, the metal block actually rose straight up, like a lid that was pressed together. Picked it up gently, and light shone from it, and a bright reactor lay quietly inside. Harpy looked at the little thing in shock. This was the energy core of the steel armor, which he brought to Leo, and he didn't understand it. Waiting for Harpy to leave, he sat in the car and called Tony, Tony, did you let me bring an energy core to Leo? Did you install it wrong? Oh, did he open it in front of you? Tony who was flying in the air asked, how did he open it? Didn't you set up a touch switch on the top, as soon as he presses it, the lid rises. Happy, you come back first, that's what I gave to Leo. Hung up the phone, and Tony, who was covered with scratches on Mark III, returned to his home, touched the switch. The lid. Seeing that Leo's control is getting stronger and stronger. Jarvis helped to disassemble the Mark III and take it for maintenance. Tony also sat in front of the computer and couldn't wait to design it. The label at the bottom right corner of the drawing reads, Mark 4 inches. Leo looked at the metal lid in his hand, I couldn't do such a delicate operation before. It seems that the microscopic operation has given me a lot of control. Looking at the small arc reactor, Leo also laughed. If I absorb the home power supply, the whole street will be out of power, and the wires cannot withstand such a huge current impact. Therefore, the Palladium Arc Mark II reactor will be Leo's best energy source at present. With plenty of high-quality metals, Leo's cultivation speed will not drop much. In the following days, Tony Stark often appeared on the front page news or cover of newspapers or magazines. The red and gold steel figure is often seen in the sky over the United States. Mark III went to a certain battlefield and destroyed all weapons and equipment on the battlefield. For a while, the wars in some small countries really calmed down a lot. After all, they couldn't be beaten, they couldn't catch up, and they couldn't break their defenses. Tony just came over to destroy the equipment and then flew away. The weapon was scrapped before it was fired. These are all money. Iron Man often appeared in news reports. He attracted the attention of the whole world, so there was a wave of Iron Man in the United States. The handsome red gold steel jersey was featured in Time Magazine's Man of the Year. A large number of Iron Man's surroundings have emerged on the market, and the iconic mask has been sold out several times. Leo stood outside the classroom watching the naive classmates in the playground wearing red and gold masks, running around there, still giving himself the sound of flying with a, shoo shoo, in his mouth. During this time, Tony Stark can be seen everywhere, television, newspapers, magazines, news reports, he has become a great hero of the United States. Countless people sing hymns to Iron Man every day, giving Tony Stark a higher position of support. Soon many small countries began to imitate steel armor. 
and a certain issue of Time magazine also specifically highlighted the reactor on the chest of Mark III. Many people with ulterior motives have adjusted their focus to Tony's energy core and want to reach out and grab it. But let alone the arc reactor, even a large-scale arc reactor can't be built. The technology of the arc reactor was completely in Stark's hands, and nothing was leaked. No one thought that there would be an arc reactor in Leo's hands. In the first month, Tony would also make two phone calls with Leo, and send another reactor over, along with a few tons of metal. In the second month, Leo also went to find Tony once, but he missed it with Tony who was out to save the world. In the third month, Leo came to Stark's home again, and smoothly entered the underground studio. Mark IV has been formed. Leo looked at Tony in one minute, using his robotic arm to wear it. Leo, I changed the appearance on the basis of Mark III, reduced the weight, and increased the flying speed a lot. Increase the internal space and cancel most of the Mark III connection mechanism to prevent lockup after armor. I added a system for filtering and reusing body fluids, and the appearance has become more handsome, right? Tony chattered a bit in front of Leo introducing the improvements to the Mark IV. The mental state seems to be a little excited. Mr. Stark, has the reactor on your chest been improved? Leo immediately asked the key point. Of course, this is the new Palladium Arc Mark III reactor, which can directly replace the Palladium metal plate, and I also made a spare, it will never happen again. Tony waved his hand, a projection appeared directly in front of the two of them, and a brand new reactor emerged. But it hasn't been built yet. It should be done in a few days. Tony clapped his hands lightly, and countless virtual three-dimensional projections appeared throughout the underground studio. Jarvis upgraded again. I upgraded and improved all the systems in the entire studio. Now the entire studio can perform projection. But there is a three-dimensional projection of the human body structure, mixed in a dozen armor models. Tony waved his hand and took all the projections back. However, Leo still found the human body projection, with a prominent red mark on his chest. It seems that Tony has already begun to be poisoned by palladium. Single quote. Leo's eyes lit up, and he saw the reactor device on Tony's chest through the Mark IV armor. There were small black stripes at the edges, but very slight. Then, I directly saw a few small metal fragments absorbed on the chest device. Was firmly absorbed on the metal wall, motionless. In fact, Leo can completely control the removal of the metal fragments now, but it will also cause certain injuries, and Leo cannot directly decompose the metal fragments. Walked over and knocked on mark number 4, Mr. Stark, how about I take out the metal shrapnel from your chest? Mark IV's mask opened, revealing Tony's surprised face. Tony was taken aback for a moment, and said with a smile, I'm fine, don't take it out, it won't matter anyway. I'm not talking about fragments, but about palladium poisoning, Mr. Stark, are you aware of this? Looking at Leo seriously, Tony fell silent. As mentioned earlier, Tony is still considering the issue of reactor outflow. If Iron Man loses the reactor, is Iron Man still? Do you have to use this energy supply from your chest? No, it can be powered by an external one. Like Obadi said, he made the strongest mass-produced murder weapon in history, but the core lies in him. Tony is afraid of this result, so even if he is poisoned to death, he is unwilling to install an external reactor, increasing the possibility of even a trace of the battle suit. Although there is always one in Leo's hands, he knows that Leo's usefulness is also his trust in Leo. Now, everyone is eyeing Tony's complete suit, so the suit and the reactor must be placed separately, and compared to the suit, this piece on the chest is the focus. Tony can't tolerate this, so now he absolutely does not allow the reactor on his chest to be placed outside. At the same time there is Tony's knowledge of himself. Tony believes that the reactor in his chest is one of his signs of becoming Iron Man and a part of Iron Man. He is afraid of losing the reactor. He is no longer Iron Man, or even a good person anymore. I'm experimenting with other elements, and just drink more chlorophyll juice. I can solve it, Leo, leave me alone. Mark IV's mask fell off, Leo, I'm going out first. I'm really busy now. Both feet spit out flames, and I don't know where to save the world. Leo was left alone in his villa studio in Malibu, but I was really relieved. Leo looked around and even saw Mark V, part of the suitcase-like armor. 
It seems Tony has never slackened. Recently, he has been really busy. But he didn't stay too much. The Nirvana Golden Wing spread out, moved lightly, turned into a streamer, and flew back. In a dilapidated small house in Russia, the lights are dim, and there is a burning furnace in it. Ivan Fanko, full of strange tattoos, picked a piece of burnt red metal from it, but it was beaten on the anvil. The only bright wall with a fluorescent lamp, covered with tape covering Tony Stark's head, torn from newspapers, torn from magazines. I can even see that some paper has been slightly yellowed, and it has been torn off for a long time. This scene is like a loyal fan of Tony, collecting all the information about him. Especially recently, there have been countless reports about Iron Man, and the torn paper has filled the entire wall. Ivan was chewing a piece of gum in his mouth and glanced at the wall, the force in his hand became a bit stronger. The whole room is full of depressive atmosphere. After arriving home, taking advantage of the holiday, watching the slower and slower progress of my cultivation, I felt a little emotional. Control point. 109 feet. Strength 21 defense 20 speed 20 spirit 20 inches. Skill. C level metal control, B level body, and C level micro control. Strengthening. Golden eye 100% copper sheet 100% steel bar 100% iron bone 38%. Derivative technique. Destroying golden eyes don't be fooled by any abilities, see through all illusions, enhance visual observation, metalize objects. Don't move the golden body, enhance great defense power, stand on the ground with both feet, you will have infinite physical strength, the body will recover faster, and will not be moved by external force. Nirvana golden wings the highest speed can be blessed to 10 times the speed of sound, the gold wings are condensed into weapons, special skills smiley face. Three months have passed, the progress of the iron bones is only 38%, and the metal has already consumed 10 tons, and even the reactor has consumed the fifth one. Increase in strength a little, but the effect of this point far exceeds the effect of a little increase before the 20-point attribute. Seeing the slower and slower progress, Leo focused on Zhenjin in his heart. Although the story of the Panthers has not yet begun, he seems to remember where the Zhenjin was stolen by an insider, and was finally snatched by Ultron. Is coming. It seems to be on a ship in Africa, but the range is too big. Packed up some things, brought his own equipment, said to Uncle George and went straight out. Walked a few streets into a small alley, and disappeared in the blink of an eye. According to the navigation points on the mobile phone, Leo prepared to go directly from New York to Africa, looking for higher quality metal, Zhenjin. Starting from New York, at an average altitude of 3,000 meters above the clouds, a stream of light began to circle the Earth. Leo's speed is getting faster and faster, slowly accelerating from the speed of Mach 3, and the speed is getting faster and faster with the blessing of Nirvana Golden Wing. Mach 5, Mach 7, after about 3 minutes of acceleration, it reached a speed of 10 times Mach. In other words, Leo can reach any place on the Earth in one hour, and it can circle the Earth in two hours. And Leo, because of the protection of the Golden Wing, seemed to be non-existent in this space, he didn't even cause any sonic booms, and even penetrated through the clouds, only a small hole appeared. It seems that there is a strange wave helping to smooth the turbulence around him, making Leo's flight silent and silent, and his small figure is hard to be detected by the satellites in the sky. Leo is about to cross the Pacific on this road, passing through the Philippines, Hong Kong, Hainan, Vietnam, Thailand, India, until reaching the African continent. Looking at the world map on the phone, he flew up sullenly. Twenty minutes later, Leo Fei took a look at the clouds and found that he had just passed by Taiwan Island and came to the sky above Hong Kong. At dusk, Leo wanted to go down and take a look, but he hadn't dropped a few meters. Not far away, there were dots of electric sparks, which instantly turned into a circle, in which a figure in a yellow robe came out. The figure in the yellow robe with the hood walked 10 meters away from Leo, and under his feet was a shiny disc. Took off his hood and revealed a clean bald head, the gentle face of the ancient wizard, looking at Leo with vigilant eyes. Gooey master, hello. Leo put his hands together and bowed slightly to Ji Yi. Leo maintained a respectful attitude towards this supreme mage who has been guarding the peace of this dimension. Who are you? This is the first time this question has been asked in hundreds of years. You do not know. 
Leo also asked, and he also had doubts in his heart, but it was true that Ji Yuyi did not carry the eye of Agamoto. My name is Leo, what is wrong with Master Ji Yuyi looking for me? Who are you? I have never seen you. You should not exist in this dimension. You will disrupt the order and bring infinite variables. There was fatigue in Ji Yuyi's eyes, but he was more alert. In the Hong Kong temple, Ji Yuyi perceives the existence of Leo, but he can't see everything about Leo with the eyes of Agamoto. But because of Leo's appearance, countless variables have been added to countless timelines, and the future will be even more unfathomable. But the ending has not changed. His end point is still to wait for the Doctor Strange who can't see the future. This is also a point of Ji Yuyi's doubts. Leo's existence caused Ji Yu Yi to find doubts in his mind, who had originally thought of insight. Ji Yu reached out his hand and slapped a palm. There were numerous cracks in the space in front of him, which shattered like a mirror. Leo's Nirvana golden wing moved and retreated like lightning, but the same mirror fragment appeared in the back, and he plunged in. Thinking of turning around again, but unable to get out, Leo was trapped in the mirror space. And Ji Yu Yi also appeared opposite Leo, but he did not have any tendency to attack, facing Leo. Gui Master, what do you mean? Leo also raised two metal thorns from behind, ready to stab out at any time. This is a mirror space. Although it exists, it cannot be detected. What happens is nothing to do with the real world. It can be used for training, surveillance, and sometimes it can isolate some danger. Ji Yu Yi took two steps forward, so, who are you? You did not exist in the original timeline. Leo looked at Ji Yu Yi warily, Mage, did you forget to say that you can't leave here without a warning? Yes, your speed is too fast, I can only control you in the mirror space, you are too dangerous. Ji Yu nodded his head and looked at Leo, stretched out his hands, and countless spark lines stretched out in the air, converging into a shield, hanging in front of him. I just want to know who you are and what is the purpose of coming to Earth. I can't even tell if you are from another dimension, although the temple did not notice your arrival. I am a human being on Earth. Leo said a bit wrongly. But you are a variable. Ji Yu Yi's magic can detect that Leo is telling the truth, and he relaxes his vigilance a bit. What do you want? Your origin. Leo's wings were closed, and he went down frantically until he stopped 20 meters above Hong Kong and stood on the ground. Looking at the lively shopping malls around, the bustling people, the colorful signs, the snack bar not far away, and the familiar words, all these made Leo feel familiar. Ji Yu Yi also flew not far from Leo, with a shield still floating in front of him. All the people passing by can not see the two of them. They are still living, shopping, and playing on their own. Leo looked at the familiar Chinese characters but had some tears, the whole universe is speaking English, it's literally, it's better here. Single quote. Ji Yu Yi also clearly noticed Leo's touch, and he didn't understand it. Ji Yu Yi mage, can't you see it now, Leo said in Chinese. Looking at the steaming food, such as fried noodles, wontons, sirloin noodles, peeing beef balls, roasting meat, etc. not far away, he swallowed. Ji Yu Yi looked at Leo, who looked like a child, and put his hands down, but he still had doubts in his heart. Hundreds of years of combat experience made him feel no killing intent on Leo. Pointed his left hand at Leo with the hanging ring, causing him to step back a few steps. Leo felt insecure in front of Ji Yu Yi. A portal appeared behind Leo, and Ji Yu Yi's voice came over, Leo, I want to talk to you, can I come to Taj Kama? Leo settled down, walked over, the portal closed, Leo stood on the ground in Nepal, and everyone around was accustomed to the scene. Koichi also appeared not far from Leo. The two of them crossed hundreds of kilometers to reach the capital of Nepal, Kathmandu. Some disciples around Ji Yu Yi bowed and saluted one after another, Hello Master Ji Yu Yi. Single quote. Ji Yu Yi also returned gifts one after another, without the pretense of a tutor. Koichi has always held the belief of, sharing wisdom, and, selfless mana, and this belief affects everyone in Kamataj. Took Leo into a room. Mage Mordu saw the respected Ji Yu Yi and walked in, poured a cup of hot tea for the two. Thank you, Master Mordor. Thank you, Master Mordor. The two voices said in unison. Ji Yu Yi is even more curious about Leo's origins. After the Master Modu left, 
Ji Yuyi stood opposite Leo and looked at Leo. In the perception of magical power, Leo was also blurred. Mr. Leo, you seem to know a lot, but I don't know anything about you. I deliberately checked your future, but I can't see anything. Did you see the end? The end. It's okay, I understand. Ji Yu paused, about six years ago, there was a timeline disorder. There were tributaries of time that shouldn't have appeared, but your appearance is so abrupt. I'm not even sure if your appearance matches your soul. Ji Yu Yi said, and walked within five steps of Leo. Leo was also very puzzled, because he didn't know his origin. How did I come into this world? What should I do? No one guides me, no system tells me. Single quote. Even, Leo couldn't even determine himself, who am I? Single quote. Leo, who has the thinking of the previous life, has never considered this question, but he has never got the answer. Tried to get Tony to check himself, but it didn't work. And now, even Ji Yu Yi, who has the gem of time, cannot know Leo's past. This made Leo, who had been following the trend and flow, think about this problem again. Taking advantage of Leo's efforts, Ji Yu Yi stepped forward and hit Leo's chest with a palm. For an instant, the whole room became quiet. A layer of golden light surged from Leo's body, blocking Ji Yu Yi's palm two centimeters away. The golden body did not move the Ji Yu Yi's attack to the outside, but Leo did not move. But Leo glanced at Ji Yu, and the golden light on his body gradually dissipated. Just stared at Ji Yu Yi in a daze, with anticipation in his eyes, as if he wanted Ji Yu Yi to come again. Because at that moment, Leo could feel the huge thrust acting on his soul, but he couldn't shake himself at all. After Ji Yu hit this palm, his originally nervous expression relaxed a lot, even with a smile on his face. Ji Yu Yi mage, come on. Leo seemed to see that Ji Yu Yi had no desire to attack, and he couldn't help but reminded him. So, another palm was pressed on Leo's chest. The huge soul thrust hit Leo's soul body directly, just when the soul was about to escape. A layer of golden light filled the whole body from the brain, firmly binding Leo's soul and body together. So, even without the defense of the golden body, Ji Yu Yi's move won't work for Leo. Ji Yu laughed, I can feel your heart and your recognition of this place. Your soul fits perfectly with your body. It is impossible for the soul of another dimension to occupy this body. It's just that your abilities are too powerful, and even the eye of Agamotto cannot condense time on you. Since you are not a life that has broken through in other dimensions, I shouldn't restrict you, Mr. Leo, you can leave. Ji Yu drank the tea in his hand, and he had no hostility towards Leo either. Leo frowned. Although he had a good impression of Ji Yu Yi as a wise teacher, he felt that Ji Yu Yi was hiding something this time. Ji Yu Yi mage, can you show me books about soul out of the body? Leo, you can't do it. You don't have the talent to learn magic. If you want to practice this spell, it will take you a lot of time. Ji Yu Yi advised. I want to try. In the end, Leo still got the book of the soul out of his body, and even the ancient one allowed Leo to take the book away, only to return the book within a year and not to spread it out. Leo thanked Ji Yu Yi mage, Ji Yu Yi mage, can you send me to the Hong Kong temple? I want to go there and see. Through the mutual portal between the temples, Leo came to the Hong Kong temple, looked back at the portal, and couldn't help but marvel at this teleportation ignoring the distance. Looking at the dark night but still brightly lit city that never sleeps, Leo shook his head, throwing all his thoughts behind him. Licked his lips, I'm going to have a big meal. Single quote. Two hours later, Leo walked out of the snack street in amazement. Carrying his little school bag, continued to find the direction, and flew silently. The stomach is full, the body is warm, but the heart is cold. There are countless foods that can make Leo forget his troubles for a while, but Leo, who has finished a bowl of wonton noodles, has no direction when he puts down the bowl and prepares to go home. In this world, there are no family members in China, but Aunt Jenny and Uncle George are waiting for him in New York. Leo in the sky turned his head and looked at these familiar and unfamiliar cities, keeping them in his heart, turning around and continuing to head towards Africa. Flew over the clouds, spread out the golden wings of Nirvana, and accelerated. Leo, who was flying fast in the air, even looked at the book in his hand leisurely. The whole book was in Sanskrit, and there were some pictures, so Leo couldn't touch his head at all. 
I wanted to take out my mobile phone to translate, but now the network signal is not very good, so I had to spread it out with a piece of metal to completely wrap the book. After a short while, looking at the African continent in front of him, Leo's eyes flashed with golden light. Silently, at the speed of Mach 3, he searched the coast of Africa. Facing this vast coastline, Leo took a little effort. After Leo left, Master Modu became a little curious, but he didn't ask Master Ji Yi. He quietly came to the library and wanted to borrow a few books to browse. I searched for the book I wanted to watch, but I happened to see an empty space in a book. This is very strange because the books in the master's library are generally not borrowed. Ask the current librarian and learned that it turned out that the book, Soul Out of the Aperture, was borrowed by a little mage, and it may take a long time to return it. Mordu also naturally judged that the book was lent by Leo, and it was allowed by Ji Yu Yi. But this book is an extremely complicated spell. At present, no one can do it except for the ancient master. Soul Out of Aperture, also called, Astral Projection, can separate the spiritual body from the physical body. Under this condition, the spiritual body is invisible and untouchable. Also does not require breathing, eating or sleeping, and is not affected by the laws of physics, while retaining all the meaning and thinking. But the flaw is that the physical body is weaker, and ordinary physical attacks can cause death. If the physical body dies while projecting from the astral body, the spiritual body will stay in the ghost state, which is the, sheep charm. As for whether it is possible to seize houses like Charles Xavier, it is unclear. But cultivating this spell requires extremely strong control, and Mordu has tried it before, but he can only enter a meditation state and cannot escape. But, how could that kid take away such advanced spells, how could Ji Yu Yi lead someone to break the rules of the library? The ancient master Gui rarely put on the eye of Agamotto again and came to the library, and saw Master Mordor standing in front of the bookshelf. Good evening, Master Ji Yu Yi. Good evening, Master Ji Yu Yi. The two greeted Master Ji Yu Yi, and Master Ji Yu Yi also replied one by one. Mordu took a step forward, Ji Yu Yi Mage, who is the kid who came today, let him take the book, soul out of aperture, and left the temple. Will the book be lost outside? Mage Mordor, that child, I don't know, but time tells me that he is full of kindness. Ji Yu Yi said ambiguously. Glanced at the time gem on his chest. This is the answer from my own exploration. It is safe before 2016. As for after 2016, that will be another story. Leo has been orbiting for two full hours, circling the African continent almost half a circle along the seashore, but still no trace of Zhenjin. Looking for a huge cargo ship, Jinmo can see the situation inside the ship clearly. Among them, I saw many weapons, oil, food, and trade ships. Leo's eyes condensed, and he saw a dozen Asian girls asterisk 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 in the rear cabin of a cruise ship, all lying unconscious on the ground. And two of the girls have been held up by a strong black man and walked into the cabin. There are seven or eight black people and two white people drinking, not knowing what they are talking about. The galloping figure stopped and rushed to the boat. Just not far from the Salva Wharf, a huge freighter is brightly lit and crowded, as if having a party. Miller, you did a great job today. The boss will definitely reward you. Fortunately, you have a good face. A strong black man said to the white man beside him drunkly, pouring a bottle of red wine in his mouth. Bram, if it wasn't for you, some of them would have run away. The white miller smiled. The typical blonde and blue-eyed white face really gave him a lot of advantages in Africa, especially for these girls. The other white Raya's complexion was a little ugly, and the wine glass in his hand fell. Reginald has been there for so long, he can't help but get started. There are 17 women this time, so you can definitely make a fortune. You said it's okay to have a handsome face. As soon as Miller appeared, the girls surrounded them, saying that they believed everything, and they could bring back three or four at a time. Look at Rice, I brought one back, and I forced it back, ha ha ha. None of you TM can't get it back, just laugh. The white rice scolded, since Miller came, his status has been lower and lower. The black people discussed today's record, and they brought back 17 people in one day. Except for one woman who broke her leg because of a fierce resistance, the rest were ready to be sent to the dock. Nine people gathered around the table to eat and drink, 
but the atmosphere was very lively, looking at the door from time to time, expecting something. The door was kicked open, and a tall black man about 1 meter 9 meters tall walked out of the cabin, holding a comatose woman in one hand, and threw the two directly onto the sofa. These two women are not like, you have to go by yourself. The taller breathed a rough breath. Reginald, it's been five hours, how are they? They are all lying down, it seems that one is dying, are you going to throw it into the sea? The tall man grabbed a piece of meat in one hand and ate it, and said indifferently. Lakasha glanced at the two unconscious women, and the corners of her mouth curled, none of them woke up, no fun at all, I'm going to get the antidote, and I'm carrying one, but two women, do you want them to die? Turned and walked towards the rear cabin. Leo also lightly landed on the top of the cabin at this time, and the broken golden eyes were always open to watch the situation inside. Several people inside the cabin have already started to take care of the two women. Suddenly heard the sound of huge metal deformation from the roof of the steel cabin overhead. Along with the forcibly distorted sound of metal, the edges of the broken metal were torn apart, all extending inward, forming a big hole. A small figure floated down and stepped directly on the table, standing in the center of everyone. Leo is not very proficient in lip language, but he can basically see what these scumbags do. This is the kind of person Leo hates most, and the killing intent in his heart can't be contained. Looking at their proficient appearance, it is definitely not the first time they have done this kind of work, let alone how many people have been killed. Three of the black people quickly picked up their pistols and pointed them at Leo vigilantly. The others saw that it was just a child and laughed. A child, ha ha ha, the child has come to save mother. Rice mocked. The tall black Reginald didn't speak much, and he swung a fist with a grim face. Go and see God. The target direction is Leo's small white face, but Leo didn't wear any mask this time. The huge fist struck through the air, but was blocked by a small white hand that was completely incomparable. Grabbed his fist, twisted it hard, and the huge force directly broke his right wrist. Reginald clutched his hands and lay on the ground wailing. The other three blacks did not hesitate, and they were ready to shoot. Leo gently raised his right hand, and the three people who were about to shoot pointed their pistols at their heads. The others were all horrified when they saw this scene. Rice still wanted to continue raising his gun at Leo, but the arm was only half raised. Boom. Single quote. I heard a huge gunshot from three shots, and the three black men with guns had a blood hole in their temples. The sound of a huge gunshot spread throughout the ship, and Rakasha, who was picking a woman in the back compartment with the antidote, also heard the gunshot. How many times have you said that you are not allowed to play with guns near the pier? Boss Crow has warned so many times, are they looking for death? Lakasha cursed, unhappy, picked up a woman, and walked into the cabin. Rice heard the gunshot, and the hand that raised the gun couldn't help shaking. The pistol couldn't be held steady, and she flew out. Before the pistol hit the ground, it floated out of thin air and hit Raya's forehead. Leo looked around for the six remaining people around. Where are you going to tie those women? Said, two metal thorns appeared on the back, flying out through the air, directly penetrating the shoulders of one of the black men. Ah! A painful cry came out. A pistol also fell out of the man's back, and it still didn't land, but it was directly inserted into the man's mouth and forcibly blocked his shouting. Ask again, where are you going to tie these women? The other three pistols also found their own targets and pressed them on their foreheads. Now, only Miller, the more handsome white man, was sitting on the sofa shivering, afraid to move. Leo walked to his side, and two metal thorns pulled out from the black man's shoulders and flew in front of Miller, with the blood spikes on his chest. You come and tell me what is going on. Miller looked at Leo in front of him, his eyes filled with fear, his lips opened, and he just wanted to say something. One of the black people wanted to take a dagger from his pocket and was about to assassinate Leo behind his back. Boom. Single quote. A blood hole appeared on his forehead and fell down. I said, I said, Lakasa is the boss, Lakasa is. I am only responsible for bringing these women back, and the rest is not my business. Really, this is the first time I do it, don't kill me, please. Miller couldn't bear the fear of a little bit of metal thorns coming in, and several dead people around him shouted with trembling voices. Carry on. Lakasa was chased with the boss of Crow. 
He usually went to the city to find the women who came here to travel, and then tied them up and sold them to the boss of Crow, or sold to some people who specialized in this industry. The metal thorn on Miller's chest has penetrated half a centimeter, and he said hurriedly with more fear. I really just came here, saying that I can raise $500 for every woman. This is my second time, oh no, the fourth time, really, the fourth time. Claw. Yes, Ulysses Crow, he is the boss of this sea area. He sells a lot of weapons. There are hundreds of people under his hand. Everyone who is here must report to him. So are we. You can't kill. We. Miller looked at Leo in a trance, holding the two metal thorns on his chest with both hands and wanted to pull it out, but he couldn't shake it at all. Ulysses Crow. A familiar name, where have I heard it? Single quote. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support our channel.